Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to take this opportunity to honor the seniors who have been a part of the dance and football team over the years. First up for the dance team is McKenna Albert, who was escorted by her parents, Rebecca and Randy Albert, and her brother, Noah. McKenna will be graduating with a degree in biology with a nursing specialization. Following your graduation, McKenna will be attending the University of Southern Mississippi for their accelerated RN program and receive a CRNA certification. Thank you, McKenna. Next up is Lisa Eller, who is escorted by her mother, Tamara, and her sisters, Shane, Kayla, and Arya, and her grandparents, Patty and Joe. Lisa will be graduating with a degree in biochemistry with minors in athletic training and psychology. Following her graduation, Lisa will be attending PA school. Thank you, Lisa. Next up is Michaela Lassau, who is escorted by her friend and team alumna, Ruth McRoberts. Michaela will be graduating with a degree in history and psychology. And following her graduation, she will be attending the University of Florida for her criminology program. Thank you, Michaela. Last up is Madison Miner who is escorted by her aunt, Amy. Madison will be graduating with a degree in history, along with a psychology minor and a religious studies concentration. 
Well, we will have the ocean Madison Plans to attend graduate school and pursue a master's degree in library information science with a focus in archival studies. Thank you, Madison. Let's give a round of applause for our best seniors. Now, we would like to honor our seven football seniors. First up is Michael Brown, who is escorted by his father, Steve Brown. Michael will be graduating with a degree in business management and leadership and will, be be and will begin pursuing his career. Thank you, Michael. Next up is Stockton Ferguson, who is escorted by his wife, Emma, and his parents, Blair and Julian Ferguson. Stockton will be graduating with a degree in business management and leadership. And following his graduation, Stockton will pursue a career in either medical device or software sales or sports marketing. Thank you, Stockton. Next up is Elvis Nawanu, who is escorted by Ashley Stone Alon and Bryce Lampert. Elvis will be graduating with a degree in graphic design. And following his graduation, he will pursue a career in design. Thank you, Elvis. Next up is Matthew Johansson, who is escorted by his parents, Phil and Kristen Johansson, and his grandparents, Wayne and Georgia Bowers. Matthew will be graduating with a degree in psychology. And following his graduation, he will pursue a master's degree in psychology. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, Next up is Bert Shelley, who is escorted by his parents, Leanne and Steve, and his brothers, Connor and Craig. Bert will be graduating with a degree in business management and leadership. And following his graduation, Bert will move to Utah, where he recently received his emergency medical technician certification and will become a firefighter. Thank you, Jake. Next up is Billy Seawright, who is escorted by his parents, Ben and Jacqueline, his brother Jacob, and his fiancée, Carolyn. Carolyn will be graduating with a degree in business management and leadership. And following his graduation, Billy will be getting married in January and will go to school to become a firefighter. Thank you, Billy. Last up is Colby Hyder, who is escorted by his parents, John and Wendy. Colby will be graduating with a degree in family and human development and following his graduation, he will attend graduate school to pursue a master's in social work. Thank you, Colby. Let's give one more round of applause for all our seniors.
Ladies and gentlemen, please pay your attention to the field for today's coin toss. Today's officials, referee Pat Ryan, umpire Scott Wolf, headlinesman Preston Stoker, line judge Dave Brewer, field judge Andrew Thorpe, side judge Greg Lee, and back judge Donovan Platt. This afternoon, captains for the Blazers are number 11, TJ Hersey, number 28, Kevion Boltman, number 42, Chris Barner, and number 46, Andrew Norton. Representing tonight, number 3, Stockton, Ferguson, number 30, Alex Lankton, number 36, Darren Reed.
Dr. Ross, who drives, who moves his cap and takes the flag. Supporting today's national anthem is Mario Anderson. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's broadcasting for another presentation of Southern Virginia University Athletics. We are here at Knight Stadium in beautiful Buena Vista, Virginia, for today's USA South matchup between the Blazers of Belhaven University and your Knights of Southern Virginia. I'm Dawson Weider, joined today by my friend Quinn Meyer, and today should be interesting as Belhaven, one of the top teams in the USA South Conference, coming off of their first loss of the year in a tough overtime loss to Maryville. So, they're looking quickly to correct their course, and Southern Virginia, of course, trying to pull off the upset and trying to help out their season. But Quinn, great to be here with you today. Glad to be here. Great weather this uh, this afternoon for some football. But you said it best, Austin. You know, both teams coming off losses. Bellhaven, their first loss of the season. So it already was going to be a good challenge for the Knights. Right. But it might be more challenging because you know Bellhaven, they're coming in motivated after the first loss of the season that put them back into the number two spot in the USA South standings. Right, absolutely. And, you know, you talk about them coming in here with a lot to prove to themselves mostly and coming in with a chip on their shoulder. You know, I mentioned the overtime loss to Maryville. It was a score of 20-7, to 7, and for those who follow football at all, you'll recognize that that's kind of an odd score because what happened there is they went in overtime, tied at 7, then Maryville was able to score a touchdown, but then, you know, you had Bellhaven throwing a pick six there at the end, making it 20-7 to 7 at the end of the game. Oh. And Southern Virginia, for them, you know, a couple weeks ago, we saw them get the first win of the year and the only win so far of the year against LaGrange, 52-26. to Since then, they've had a hard time getting past the 28-point margin. They scored 28 against Brevard College the next week in a 28-49 loss. Then seven points against North Carolina Wesleyan, and then seven points against Greensboro College as they lost that one 7-47. to But Bellhaven won the toss and elected to receive the opening kickoff. And we are underway here at Knight Stadium on the return here is Deontay Galashay. He's got some space, making some moves at the 35, 40. Finally brought down at the 43 yard line. And so we'll see Bell Haven set up shop in very good starting field position. And you know, Quinn, you and I were talking before the game that Bell Haven, they're coming to this game with a very balanced attack. They really rely on their running game to really set up the play action pass and that's kind of why they really struggled last week because they couldn't establish the run yeah yeah you could see compared to every single one of their victories you know the gains rushing were way down than typical but that's their bread and butter you know using the rush to help their pass offense as well and they're going right to the pass to start things off that was Tim Johnson on the completion to number 82. That is K.J. Hickman, the junior wide receiver from Fernando, Mississippi. And it's a good gain of about, we'll call it, seven yards on that one. So quick pass to the outside, getting the passing game comfortable, make sure they get a good, easy completion. Had a defender for Southern Virginia line up off sides, but able to get back in time. 
This time to hand off to number zero, Devin Daniels. Not the usual halfback that Bellhaven relies on quite a bit in Colby Blunt, who is closing in on 1,000 yards rushing this year coming into this one, 851. Yeah, he's been a huge weapon for, for Bellhaven on the offense, and this will be a really, really nice test for the front line of Southern Virginia against a really strong rush offense. They're going to hand it off to Daniels again. He's got some space right at the middle. And he's finally going to get brought down inside the 15. So Bellhaven starting off swinging. Yeah, Daniels, as you mentioned, Dawson, not typically not their lead back, but has had his fair share of snaps and has been able to get the ball in the end zone too. So uh, no surprise to see him doing big things for Bellhaven early. They're going to hand off to him once again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know. And now it's at the six-yard line. Make it second down and two yards to go. A late flag coming in here. We'll wait to see what the call is. Maybe some extracurricular activity after the fact. Here's the call. So they're going to call it personal foul against number 99, Jacob Seawright, the junior defensive lineman from Cocoa, Florida. You weren't, weren't even really able to see what happened there. Maybe some words were spoken, maybe an extra hit at the end, but it makes it first down and goal for the Blazers. Yeah, red zone offense for Bellhaven has been solid this year as well. I think um, either 15 or 16 touchdowns in their 19 tries, so certainly lethal as well. That's a good percentage of, as I've ever seen. And another handoff to Daniels, and he's going to get in the end zone. Might as well just call out the drive of Devin Daniels. Four carries, a touchdown, and he has a long run on his second carry of the game. And just like that, the Blazers have a 6-0 lead with a point after pending. And again, just a really tough run up the middle. The offensive line really able to make a wide open space for Daniels to get in there. And he had to break one tackle to fall into the end zone. Point after is up. And it is good. Make it 7-0 for the Blazers. And win just like we hinted at right at the start of this drive. The running game is their bread and butter, only throwing one pass on the very first play of the game. After that, just running wild. Yeah, pretty much a picture-perfect per first drive for Bellhaven. And obviously having such a lethal run game, you know, allows them to eat up the clock too, which is why they've really dominated possession throughout the year. Absolutely. So again, the score now standing 7-0 to zero here with just only a minute. Uh, taking off the clock of the first quarter here at Knight Stadium. But now the Knights have a chance to respond back. And, you know, Quinn, we alluded to the fact that Southern Virginia's offense has been inconsistent over the year. Again, they had the game against LaGrange where they had 52 points in that victory over LaGrange. And then after that, they've had some games that scored about 21, 28, and then some games where maybe scored one touchdown. It's just really been difficult for them to get a consistent flow going. Yeah, and you know, they, they have weapons. You know, they've they've found a good groove at times with quarterback Lachlan Hackley and then have a, um, a deep threat with Isaac McMullins, who they like to put in motion as well. They are missing Dariq Washington, who's uh, a speedy threat on the kick return as well as re receiving for them. So um, they certainly had their challenges. It's been up and down, just as you said, Dawson. And, and especially last game against Greensboro, you know, they, they had a couple of deep shots down the field early that were – either dropped or they fumbled. And so um, I'm sure Coach, Coach DuPay is looking to get some consistency and really avoid those turnovers in the backfield as well. And that's the big thing too, you know. You and I were talking before the game that this year for Southern Virginia, their play is where the handoff is not done well and it's fumbled or, you know, you have a good drive going or a good pass play and then just things do not work out for you. you got to execute on all levels. They're going to pitch it to the right side. That's Langtree. He is brought down hard in the backfield by Tyler. W Actually, that's Wyatt Beck on that carry. And he's just brought down hard on that hit. And again, this will be another, you know, a challenge for the Knights on offense as we mentioned earlier how good Bellahaven is defensively, right. only allowing 20 points twice during the entire season, and, and one of those times was in their loss to Maryville that went to overtime, so really stellar defense throughout the year for Bellhaven. So second down and 12 for the Knights. Hackey back to pass. He's got pressure rolling out to his left. He's brought down in the backfield. 
that time by number 60. That is Jaheim Burkett, defensive lineman from Columbia, Mississippi. And again, Packy rolling up to his left side and just did not have enough speed to get to the outside and make a run for it. Well, that's, that's just a really impressive play by Burkett. You know, Hackey yeah. is a pretty mobile quarterback. We've seen him able to get through um, scramble to safety and, and has quite a few rushing yards on the season, so a really nice defensive play to wrap him up. So that makes it third down and 17. The Knights yet to have a positive yardage play on this drive. Hackey looks to his right. Wide receiver pass to the outside. And they're going to say it's incomplete. So three and out for the Knights to start off this game. Not the start you're wanting whatsoever. Negative 17 yards on three plays. I mean, again, we talked about Bellhaven coming in here with a chip on their shoulder. And what better way to prove that than not allowing a single positive yard on your opponent's first drive? Yep, so again, you know, picture perfect on the offensive drive to start and then great on the defensive side as well. Well, a Michael Brown punting it away for Southern Virginia. And Michael is a senior. He's done a, done a solid job punting for the Knights. He's been called onto the field a lot, of course, but... Um, solid night bounce to the good 32. Punt. So not as great a field position for the Blazers this time around. And so if you're Southern Virginia's defense, you got to recognize that at some point you're going to be struggling to contain this offense. And the main thing you got to do is stop the run. Because again, we mentioned Bellhaven, they live off the run and they can get a play action pass off that. Their offense just opens up completely when they're able to get the ground game going. And so going this drive, you kind of are tempted to put everybody in the box, but at the same time, there's so many athletes for Bellhaven that are spread out everywhere that they can attack you with. Johnson's gonna hand it off to the left side. Some more space here down the sidelines. Finally pushed out of bounds. That is TJ Hershey. Excuse me, that's Macon Bentley, excuse me, the wide receiver as he's listed on the def chart. But he's been in the backfield for every snap so far in this one. Yeah, and you know, Bell having rushing the football, it, it's not they're just attacking right down the middle. They can cut to the outside as well. And it looked like um, the Southern Virginia defenders might have had the angle in that one, but a good play to get some speed to the outside and make it into a big play. And so far it's looking like the Knights defense is just having a hard time containing the runs, keeping them to the middle of the field between the hashes. And when Bill Haven, like you said, is able to bounce it outside, that's where they've gotten a lot of chunk of their yards. Here's a man in motion. Here's the quarterback keeper. On the outside's got good lead blockers brought down from behind that time by Southern Virginia number 15, Jason Spackman, freshman linebacker from Smithfield, Utah. And again, that's why you know it's so important to establish your run game because if you can exploit that middle of the field, then they're gonna start dragging players back down towards the middle to, to help out with that, and then you can really take advantage of the passing as well. Quick pass to the outside, led him a little too far. That'll be an incompletion. It was intended for Reginald Garrison, sophomore wide receiver from Germantown, Tennessee. So now, again, this Bellhaven offense has been clicking in all cylinders, but you're SVU here, and you have a third down situation. It's third down and just a couple of yards, and Bellhaven is very capable of making up that yardage, but talk about a momentum shift that you can have early on if you can get a stop here. Of course, Bellhaven, I, I really would be shocked if they didn't just run up the gut here. Actually going to throw it here. Pressure on the quarterback, but a great route to the outside. I think it was the fullback that snuck out on that reception. That's number 22 after the tight end, Zach Hammett. Well, and it looked like at first Southern Virginia was able to snuff that out pretty nicely and get some pressure on the quarterback, but the man in motion was able to get free and, and convert on that first down. I think what happened is that Hammett was uh, – he was lined with tight end, and it was basically a tight end screen. You don't see a lot of those very often, but they allowed the pressure to come in. He came across right behind the offensive line, passed down the field. This Good incomplete. defensive play. Yeah, he's able to get a hand in there and disrupt it. On the play that time, that was number 20, Kiki Washington on the defense there. And again, it looks like a catch at first, but fought all the way to the ground, forcing completion. Now second down and 10, the first time, I guess the second time rather, the where they've had a play of no yards. Yeah, the secondary is going to have to dig deep as well and, yes. and disrupt those pass because, you know, they're not going to stop running the ball. 
And so any chance you get, make them lose it down on those incomplete passes. Their hand off to the right side. Got good blockers ahead. Finally brought down after a solid gain. That is running back number two, Deontay Galache. And that's going to be another first down. And that formation, again, we talk about all the weapons that Bell Haven has. When you have a formation with two running backs on either side of the quarterback, then one behind him, as a defense, you don't know where it's coming from. You know, it's really going to confuse you. And when just a simple handoff to the right side, it was able to be very effective with a lot of the blockers they had out front. And they're in that similar formation now. Going to send one of them in motion. And up the middle. Breaking tackles. Getting inside, maybe right at the 15-yard line. And that's once again Macon Bentley. And to aid in that rushing game, you know, that they have some players that can block really, really well. You saw in those two explosive run plays most recently, really good blocks on the near side of the field to allow the running back to, to free up some space for himself. And one thing I'm noticing already in the early goings of this game is that the Knights are able to make first contact pretty early on in the play, close to the line of scrimmage. It's just finishing those tackles has been a struggle. These running backs for Bellhaven have really been able to push through, pump their legs, and get a couple extra yards at least. Ran off to him again. Makes some moves inside the 10. Going to waltz to the end zone. Get some contact there, but he will score. Touchdown, Blazers. So the first drive, you had Devin Daniels, who dominated the carries. Now this drive, it was Macon Bentley. And so, again, they're able to really spread out who they can attack you with, and that's really been the name of the game for the Blazers. Now, I mean, coming in today with 23 touchdowns on the rush, you know they've got multiple weapons to, yes. to get those touchdowns, so not a surprise there. But, again, just too much space on the outside of the field, and, and the, the linebackers weren't able to get there in time for the Knights. PAT is up, and no good. Flying in there and nearly, I think he got, made a guy on his hand on it. That was Colby Knight. May have tipped it just a little bit to affect the kick. And I think that's the second time in the past couple of weeks where Colby's had a really nice play like that. Last week, I think it was on the second touchdown that Greensboro scored, he got a hand to it and, and blocked their extra point. So um, good help by the special team. Certainly in a game like this as well, you know, special teams can go a long way yeah. in creating momentum for your squad. I mean, just making those extra plays right. Even if a lot of the things don't go your way, you know as a coaching staff and as a roster that you have players like Colby Knight making those extra effort plays just to give you a little bit of something. And again, we've talked about in the past how a special team situation like a missed PAT could be the entire difference. We see that in college football all the time. And so a Southern Virginia in this offensive drive can really put something together, get a couple first downs, and even if they don't score, just kind of change at the field position battle. Again, just slowly work your way back into it. Yeah, and you want to put together a drive more than a couple minutes so you can you know, eat up some clock and take some more possession to keep your defense off of the field for a little bit longer. Here's the return. He's broken through. Gets all the way out to the 35-yard line. Kevin Williams has been a really nice addition to this squad this year. He's the leading rusher, I think, on the team as well. Kevin he, Williams. He's been able to explode quite a few times this year on the kicker turns as well as rushing the ball down the middle. Indeed, because the main bell cow for Southern Virginia going to this year was Alex Langtree. He's still one of the running backs that I really like to rely on, but a lot of teams have kind of caught on to him and have keyed on him. And Keevan Williams, like you mentioned, has really come in and provided a lot of relief. We'll see Langtree in the backfield with Hackey to start off this possession at the Knights' own 35-yard line, first and 10, with 8 minutes and 47 seconds left in this first quarter. The Knights already finding themselves down by two scores. Need to make something happen here. Great pass out to the left side. A solid hit at the end of that one. But maintaining possession is Matt Johansson. Yeah, that's a good release from Hack. He able to get out quick and right on the money to, to his receiver. And you saw number two, that was uh, D. Gray. He was, he was flying in, trying to make a play on that ball, but Johansson did a good job of getting himself between the defender and the ball. So now second down and two. First positive play for the Knights today. Trying to get to the sideline, and honestly in that situation, it's well covered. 
You know, you got to put it where only your receiver can get and if no one else towards the sideline. Yeah, and they're certainly going to key on, on Isaac McMullen, the leading receiver for the Knights this right. year. Really speedy um, threat for the Knights. So they're certainly going to keep an eye on him. And I was well covered, just as you said. So now third down and two. Again, you got Lang Tree in the backfield, two receivers on either side. Hackey's going to try down the sideline. Receiver's not even able to look, really, as he's trying to battle with his defender. That was intended for number 18, Domo Dwyer. It's now fourth and two. And in this situation, I feel like he got to punt it away. I mean, you are down by two scores. But if you don't get it, you're giving this great offense, really great field position. And I think that's Looks exactly like what they're going to do. do that. Because, again, you want to be aggressive, and you see more and more this year, especially in the NFL and, and college football, you see a lot more people going for it on fourth down. But in this situation, I feel like that would be a little too aggressive. Mm -hmm. And back to return is number two, Deontay Galachet. A nice low punt. That's going to get a good bounce. Yep, nice spin move there to get out of the tackle. A flag comes in around the 35-yard line. Yeah, it's good coverage right away, but the Knight defenders. Uh, it looked like for a second I wasn't sure if they were going to give Mike Brown the option to, to throw if he saw someone open, but right. stopped it for the punt. And, yeah, and a pretty good stop there. So hold on, Bellhaven. I believe that's number 18, Nigel Owens. And so that'll that'll work out for Southern Virginia's defense again. The Knights' offense able to make a little bit more happen on that drive. Yeah, and, and just to touch on as Bellhaven's offense comes out on the field, you could see through you know those last two passes that turned out incomplete for Hackey. You know, lots of size in the secondary for Bellhaven makes it really difficult for the smaller receivers of right. of Southern Virginia to get a even get a view of the ball, as you could see, um, he wasn't wasn't make, wasn't able to make an approach on that pass. Johnson's going to hand it off to Daniels. Again, breaking the first initial tackle, but only a gain of a yard. And that's, again, open field tackling for Southern Virginia so far today has been a struggle. And so if you're able to kind of figure that out, and that's that's one thing that will make a defensive coordinator's hair go gray really quickly is lack of ability to finish open field tackles. Yeah, even on that second touchdown, they got to him early, but it's able to make a couple of moves around the defenders and, and get into the end zone. And it completes the outside. Another... Initial missed tackle finally brought down, and that was a completion to number 82, K.J. Hickman. So first down and 10 for the Blazers. And, you know, one thing that's interesting that we haven't really addressed yet is that Bellhaven is operating very, very well offensively, all without their starting running back throughout the year, Colby Blunt, who I'm, we mentioned before, he came into this game with almost 1,000 yards rushing on the game. We haven't seen him at all today. Johnson designed quarterback run, only a gain of one. Yeah, and I'm not sure if we heard beforehand if you know there's injury or they're just keeping right. up for rest. But again, they have plenty of depth um, with their running backs, and they've been able to convert on those last two drives. I mean, wouldn't that be nice as a coach to be able to not really have your star running back in the game, but at the same time mm -hmm. still be able to operate incredibly well and be like, you know what, we'll be fine. You take some rest if he's not injured or if he is injured. He's like, don't worry about it. We can handle it. Yeah, and again, they're blocking Super World, clearing the way for their running backs. Handoff, gaining about five yards on that carry. That is number 28, Fabian Carter. That is the fourth running back to have a carry in today's game for Bellhaven, and it's not even the end of the first quarter yet. <laughs> and then also it's another testament to the work of the offensive line as well. Um, really a big test for the front line of the Knights on defense. Because at that point, when you have that much depth at running back, I mean, you as a defensive line, you're wearing yourself out, but they have a new running back in every single time with a lot of energy making defenders miss. So now third down and four to go at their own 38. Johnson back to pass, quick across the middle. Met right away, but it is complete to number 10, Adam Blanchard. Receiver from Plaquemine, Louisiana. Yeah, Blanchard able to clear up just enough space to, to get his hands on the ball first. But again, good, pretty good coverage so far by the secondary of the Knights, including that broken up play last drive. And I mean, like I said before, met right away by Kiki Washington. 
solid run on first down, gain of about nine. And that was Daniels once again. But it, yeah, again, yard, yards after contact could be, you know, the story of today. And that can psycholog psychologically really be damaging to your team. And it, it's just really exhausting that you get your hands on the on the rusher but can't take him down another five yards later. That pass a little bit too far for the tight end, Zach Hammett. So third down and one for Bellhaven. I mean, in that situation, for Bellhaven, I like that call. You know, you think just second down and one, oh, they're just going to run up the middle. Try to be a little tricky. In the words of many coaches out there, maybe getting a little too cute, I guess is the term they would probably use. But now, again, you have third down and one. Daniels run the ball well. He's the lone back in the backfield along with Johnson. They're going to run it with Johnson instead. He's going to make some moves. He's got some open space. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. He's going to waltz in untouched. Touchdown, Blazers. Yeah, and again, you know, John tonight tried to run it. He's done it all year long. I think that's his fifth touchdown on the year now for the Blazers. So, again, not only do you have a, a bunch of solid running backs, but you have a dual-threat quarterback who loves to run the ball and can go right up the middle and has lots of speed and strength. And once again, as you saw that instant replay there, I mean, he's able to bounce it to the outside. A lot of great blockers ahead of him. And that's the thing is that they have been able to break that initial contact, but they've had blockers up ahead to really clear the pathway for them. Another missed PAT for Bellhaven. That's Colby Heider getting in there once again, causing chaos, making it 19 to zero. So, I mean, at the end of the day, yes, you're down by three scores, but you at least got your special teams going well for you as far as kick defense is concerned. Yeah, certainly that's, you know, been a strength in the past couple of weeks for the Knights and, and they've continued it here against Bellhaven. And, you know, so far with the struggles defensively and offensive, on offense as well, you know, that's going to be a, a part of the game that they look to, to to again gather some momentum. And so now the Knights down three scores here in the first quarter, just under five minutes remaining. off here. And kicker going into today's game has actually been pretty consistent. 27 to 32 on the year. Really struggling today with Colby Hyder providing that pressure off the outside. Return goes out to just past the 25, right around the 28 yard line, and that's where the Knights will set up shop. Yeah, and you know he's been pretty consistent on his PATs, but then, you know, Bellhaven's been so successful in the red zone and able to convert those drives into touchdowns that he hasn't, I think he's only taken one field goal other than his extra points, which he did make. So um, certainly a good kicker, but good pressure by the special teams of the Knights to get in there. And so now if you're Southern Virginia, you're down three scores here in the first quarter. I mean, at this point, you got to get something going here unless you want this game to start getting ugly. You really got to make some noise, get some yardage, and the pass to the outside is incomplete, intended for the running back who is sneaking out of the backfield. That is Walter Collins, freshman from Cache Valley, Utah. Yeah, that one might have even been a blessing in disguise as it looked like about two or three Blazers read that all day long. Could have been a loss of yardage, or even worse, you have multiple players coming in there trying to shoot the ball out. Could have been a fumble. So now second down and 10 at their own 28. They're going for the hard count, and so they'll catch Bellhaven sneaking across, unless there's something we didn't see. They're going to call that on number 97. That is Carlton Brown, the defensive lineman from Memphis, Tennessee. So second down and five, and in this situation, that's something you got to do. You got to be able to be more disciplined and be able to get some hard counts, try to make Bellhaven make some mistakes, and then capitalize on those mistakes. Nearly getting them to jump again. again. 
Hackey going ahead for a gain of about one and a half yards. And Bellhaven, you know, relati relatively disciplined team. I think they're giving up an average of 50 yards per game off penalties. A good job by the Knights to use the hard count and get some extra yard. It's there for free. And that's the thing, too, is that if you're Bellhaven, you're already up by three scores. You're kind of the very natural inclination is to get a little comfortable, kind of start to pull your ears back and just pave your way ahead, try to make some highlight plays. I think the coaches will just bring them together and just say, hey, no more of that. Another flag thrown on that play there. It was intended for number 81 of Southern Virginia. That is uh, Kike Bar uh, Baker, excuse me. Defensive holding on Macon Bentley, so two penalties down. on the Blazers that the Knights, again, can really take advantage of. And in a game like this, those are, those are unforced errors by the defense that can really work to your advantage and get close to midfield. It makes and you feel a little bit more comfortable in the pocket. and, and also Absolutely. Okay. It shows you that some things are going your way. If nothing else, some things are going your way. Hackey throwing to the right side. Met immediately for a loss of about two. On the reception was number six, Jake Shank. So make it second down and 12. And see if they can find a way to get Isaac Mullen involved. He's been covered pretty nicely so far through the first three drives. And I just wanted to see them get the running game going a little bit here. I mean, they're able to pass it around and spread out the defense a little bit, maybe run it up the middle, get a couple yards that way. And the McMullen right there. Actually, it's Johansson. He's going to gain back a yard, make it third down, make it about third down and 10. Yeah, it look, looked like a good play call there. It's just the, the DB was able to get there um, before the blocker really arrived on the scene, and it didn't give Johansson a really good angle to get around the, the defender. And the thing with those plays is that in order to have them pull off successfully, you got to get the ball out there as quick as you possibly can. you got to be able to turn quickly, release the ball quickly, and Hackey, he's got a solid arm, but he's kind of hesitating just a, enough for the defensive backs mm -hmm. to get in there and make a play. Yeah, we saw the, the first play they they – Executed pretty well as he gets taken down there. You know, he got it out really quickly, just as you said. But that time, maybe a split second too late. It allowed the defender to get on top of it quickly. So Hacky gains back a yard, make it fourth down and nine. And so I know that the Knights were in a similar situation to this just the previous drive. Close to midfield. You were down by two scores. Looks like going to punt it away again and try to really pin them deep this time around. But now they had the first down thanks to the penalties. Able to give her defense a little bit of a break. And so we'll see if the Knight Stevens is able to stiffen up a little bit here and to prevent you from going down four scores. Side spin on that punt here. It's on his face mask. He's gonna have to dive onto it. He is able to recover it. That is Galashay once again. Or Galashaw, excuse me. You know, and, and with those punts, there's certainly strategy to it. Yes. You know, obviously, when you're a kick returner, you know, you're not wanting to see a, a ball bouncing for 10, 15 yards in front of you because you can know it. You can you know it can take a weird hop at any moment. Yeah. And it bounced right off his face it mask. Did. And again, that could have been an absolute disaster for the Blazers, but fortunately for them, Galashaw able to jump on it right away. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I like these low punts by Mike Brown. Don't just punt it up high and give them a spiral to catch. That's what they want to see. Right. Right. And so give these give them these slow hoppers. It's difficult to read, and it gives your other teammates more time to pounce on the ball as well. Johnson looked to his left. He's going to run it. Got some blockers. Brought down after a gain of maybe a yard. Maybe in fact they're going to say he lost a yard. I guess the refs on both sides are disagreeing on the spot at the moment, but they're going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage. But then that, that's exactly the kind of play that you want to start off this drive um, against the offense if you're the Knights. You know, good strength by the front line of the Knights to push the, that offensive line back a little bit 
and made it difficult for Johnson to advance and get around the, the blockers. Now Sean Brown on that tackle. Here's Daniels on the carry. Another great stop for Southern Virginia. Only a gain of one. Make it third down and nine. And just like that, you feel a little bit of energy coming alive on Southern Virginia's sideline. We're going to have a timeout here called by the Blazers. They're not liking what they're seeing. Yeah, you needed either a couple of stops for a loss or stopping right at the line of scrimmage um, to force them into a difficult third down and right. long, essentially. And in the worst field position that the Blazers have had by far so far today, pinned down on their own 17-yard line, which, again, isn't the worst thing in the world. It's not like being back down to your own two. But in comparison, you know, now Southern Virginia, you're feeling it. You're able to pin them deep. You got a good situation here. Now, the major problem that you can have here is you start to let that excitement that you're building up kind of overshadow your rational thinking. You kind of forget that you have a job to do. And you got to stay in your lane, stay in your position, execute. No penalties. No penalties, exactly. Don't let your emotions get ahead of you. Yeah, and if they, get, if they can get another solid stop here and, and force them into a kick, you know, try and make their kickers make a play. Um, and you can possibly get really good field possession for the offense and get their mojo going as well. They got another quarterback in there. This is quarterback number 14, Brock Morris, standing at six foot two. He's going to fumble the snap, struggle to get it. It's on the ground for what seems like forever. And he's going to lose about four yards. I'm. I'm really curious at the decision to pull Tim Johnson on that play. He really hasn't done a bad job at all so far today, but the Knights defense getting the much needed stop. And again, Quinn, we go back to something that you mentioned before, unforced errors. That's exactly what that was. And in a situation like that, you're third down and nine, and you put in a new quarterback in there who hasn't seen any time today. Yeah, and really hasn't seen much time all season. And so a really interesting call. Maybe thought that they could throw the Knights defense off a little bit, but didn't work, obviously. And a really important uh, third down stop there for the Knights. Trying to outsmart the Knights defense, but they ended up outsmarting themselves, really. Fair catch right at midfield, and Southern Virginia will have their best field position all day. And now, if you're Southern Virginia, you have a chance to really make something happen here. If you get some points on the board, whether it be a field goal or a touchdown, your defense is feeling good now. You have a momentum on your side. Again, college football, anything can happen. You, you're down three scores in the first quarter, mm -hmm. and that's no one wants to be in that position, of course. Yeah. But now, who knows? Make something happen. Build some momentum. Yeah, and, and as we mentioned earlier, you know, it would be nice to see them establish the run game, um, which they haven't been able to do. And, you know, Coach Dupay has said that plenty of times, you know, you, success on the pass game comes through the success on the rush. The option here and the pitch is – Fumbled and recovered by Bellhaven. Back-to-back -back confusing play calls for both Bellhaven and Southern Virginia. With Bellhaven, you had the substitution of quarterback Brock Morris. And here's the thing is that the running back in this replay, you see that he got ahead of Hackey a little bit. And so Hackey had to kind of pitch it forward, which is harder to do if you've ever run the option. But they haven't run the option all game long, and they decided to do it right there against a team that's yeah. been faster than you on the outside. Well, and it seems like they typically have ran the option with Alex Langtree in there, but they put Kevin Williams in there, who's had a really good season rushing the ball right. right down the middle, a strong runner. And so interesting to go to the option there, and it turns into a quick turnover. Exact, the, the one thing you didn't want on first down. <laughs> when you finally establish the momentum as Johnson's back to pass, he's looking deep, looking down the middle field. He's got an open got receiver. Him. And that is a touchdown for Bellhaven. That is uh, that is caught by number 28, Fabian Carter. He's listed as a D-back, but he plays wide receiver on occasion. And, and here is the thing with that is that he had it wide open down the seam. Perfect ball. Caught him in stride. But my thing is that if you're Southern Virginia, you just had the momentum. You had just gotten a stop. You had the ball out around midfield, and then it goes back to those errors. You shoot yourself in the foot, and then the next play, Bellhaven takes advantage. It's what good teams do when the other team shoots themselves in the foot. They say, hey, we're not going to take this for granted, as that point after is good. Make it 26-0 to zero with yeah. five seconds left in the first quarter. I just It's, it's a, you know, a, a similar situation to what 
happened uh, last week early in the game against Greensboro. We, right. we talked a little bit before, Dawson, about how you know Hackey had Johansson on an open, you know, very nicely thrown 35, 40 yard pass that was dropped. The next play they go back and fumble on the pitch. And so um, it just puts momentum back in the other team's favor. And that's, again, you talk about situations that as a coach you just hate to see is, again, I'll go back to it, and people might get annoyed that I, I keep saying it, but you have a situation where you have a chance to fight back, you know, make something happen. And, and the thing is, the play calling before that play, you know, for Southern Virginia hadn't been bad. They had some outside passes. They had a couple mm -hmm. of runs for hacky. They were able to make some things happen. But they started to switch things up all of a sudden. And, and, you know, I know that Southern Virginia back in the day used to run the triple option on a regular basis. But I think a lot of times, whether it be Bellhaven adding the quarterback or all of a sudden running the option for Southern Virginia, you outsmart yourself. And here's a solid return. That is Williams able to bring it back out to the Knights' 36-yard line. Yeah, and I, I'd like to see what Williams can do just running straight down the middle and, and you know, maybe a toss to the outside. But he's had a really strong year rushing the ball, so um, – let him see what he can do. He's only had a couple of snaps on offense so far. They've had Alex Langtree in for the most part. But it'll be interesting to see how they approach this next drive. There is a flag on the field at the 30-yard line, and the refs are discussing it here. And now, of course, they'll also bring us to the end of the first quarter with a score to, uh, with 26-0 to zero in favor of the Blazers. But the refs are discussing this penalty We've yet to hear exactly what is going on here. Southern Virginia is guilty of holding. So I think they said they're going to spot it at the 20 yard line. But they're going to have to flip it to the other side of the field since the end of the quarter. So there's the long walk back to the other 20. But here's the thing is that even though, much like myself, I know some people out there watching and supporting Southern Virginia might be frustrated by the last couple of plays. Um, again, building momentum and then losing it right away. But now you've shown yourself you can build up momentum. You can put yourself in good situations. So if you think of it like that, it's you kind of have to have short-term memory going to this quarter. Whole new game. Every single quarter is a brand new game. Now the thought process is, can we win the second quarter? And then after that, can we win the third? Then can you win the fourth? That's only the real. That's really the only way you can approach it, honestly. Yeah, and they did. They, they did a pretty good job recovering last week as well after a really difficult start in the first half. They, you know, played Greensboro even in the second half. It's each had a score apiece, and so. We also have a change of quarterback at Southern Virginia with Isaiah Maxey in there mm -hmm. taking snaps. So they're going to try to see what he can do. We've seen him come in a couple different times this season as well as last year. He really took a lot of snaps mm -hmm. the previous season and kind of took over that starting position. Yeah, he, he started out this year in, in that game against Christopher Newport and then I, I think started against Bridgewater as well until Hackey really took over. But he's got a good arm, and let's see if he shows it off here. And pressure brought in as he he went to the outside of the pocket, and that's the thing is that I, we've seen both Maxi and Hackey do that today because Bellhaven, they're bringing pressure with their defensive ends on the outside, and they have the speed to be able to go around, and so both Maxi and Hackey need to figure out that they can't just drift to the outside and they're looking for routes to open up. But in that situation, you've got to go more towards the middle of the field, step up into the pocket, and if need be, run up the field because both Hackey and Maxi both have good athletic ability and good speed, mm -hmm. and you got to give yourself a chance. Very tight formation here inside their own 10-yard line. Maxi back to pass again, this time stepping up in the pocket. Throws a low one. Completed that time to number 18, Dumbo Dwyer. Makes that fourth down and 15 or 14. So another frustrating drive for Southern Virginia as they'll have to punt it away once again. So again, still struggling to 
establish that run. Um, and, and obviously we know Coach Dupe is very familiar with establishing a solid run game with his years at Navy, of course. So I'm sure they'll be able to, be able to make some solid adjustments and hopefully come back stronger um, for Manson their next drive. miss. That time is number two, Deontay Galashaw on the return inside night territory. But you're absolutely right, you know, to pay long extent of history of both the triple option, establishing a good run game. But since the first possession, it doesn't really feel like they've tried to do a standard handoff up the middle. They've kind of abandoned it a little bit. And that's something you kind of have to get back to. Even if it only gains like one or two yards, you got to make the defense respect that rushing attack because if mm -hmm. you don't, you end up in situations like with the previous drive with Maxi, you know, you're just going to get pressure from all sides and having a hard time really establish anything in the passing game. Yeah, you know, especially at this point in the game, you know, you just want positive plays. You know, anything right. that's not a positive play will set you back, whether it's a loss of yardage or just, you know, wasted down with an incompletion again. Um, so we'll hope they'll come back a little bit stronger this next drive. Again, break and tackles is number four. That's Kobe Blunt. We're finally seeing Kobe Blunt in the game. Yeah, we've talked a little about Kobe early in the game, obviously getting his first snaps, but he, you know, he leads this lethal rushing attack with 828 yards on the year and, and 10 touchdowns. I do want to make a correction. We mentioned number 11 running the ball for Bellhaven. It's actually TJ Hurt. Uh, indeed, it is TJ Hersey who has run the ball. Flag is thrown as Blunt is running free, pushed out at the three yard line, but a flag is thrown at the 39 yard line here. And it looks like it could have been a horse collar tackle here at the end of it. It indeed looks like it is coming back. Yeah, line in the backfield, right close to the line of scrimmage. So hold on the offensive line of Bellhaven. Unfortunately for Southern Virginia, because that was going to set them up in a really solid situation there at first and goal. But now they're backed up to pretty much right at midfield. So now second down and 15 for the Blazers. So again, this is a big down for Southern Virginia to get either a, a quick stop or a loss of yardage to put the pressure on them in third down potentially. Johnson under center is gonna hand it off up the middle. Brought down that time by number 28, Mamoa Matalolo. You know, they, they really like that right side. They've been able to exploit that side of the line of Southern Virginia, and they just haven't stopped going back to it so far. And that was Galashaw on the run that time. Make a third down and six. And Bill Hammond returning to that heavy back set. They're gonna hand it off up the middle. This is Blunt, he's got some space and blocks up ahead of him, 20, 15, trying around the corner, gets pushed out at around the 12 yard line. And again, just, you know, solid blocking by the, I think it was the fullback set up next to the quarterback, Johnson, who he puts in motion, just a really nice block that doesn't give the, the linebackers in line of Southern Virginia really any space to make a play on the runner. Colby Blunt now with 33 yards on the day. Again, we didn't see him the first couple possessions. Here's Blunt once again. The ball Fumbled. hits the floor. Looks like Bell might have pounced on it in time. I believe so. I think a Knight defender got his hand on it for a split second. It looks like it was recovered by offensive lineman number 75. Uh, that is Jeremiah uh, Bionrostro. So now second down and two. Very fortunate break there for Bellhaven. And the I formation here. They've gone through a couple different formations so far today. 
They're gonna have up the middle. Powering his way into the end zone is Devin Daniels. Daniels gets his second rushing touchdown of the game. Yeah, and again, that's another excellent job by the offensive line. He went in there mostly untouched into the end zone, so lots of strength, lots of good movement up front for Bellhaven to make that happen. So now makes it 32 to nothing with the point after pending. PAT is up and it is good. I do want to make a correction. It was actually number 76 who recovered the fumble on the previous play. That was Zay Stevens. Graduate senior. Able to pounce on that one. Senior from Horn Lake, Mississippi. So now 33 to 0 stands the score. And again, you know, you look at these two teams on paper and Bellhaven coming in with one loss on the year. We talked about them coming in with a chip on their shoulders. So them having a lead at this point is not necessarily the surprising part as, again, Southern Virginia has really struggled this year. But I think the way that it's played out, especially in the second quarter, has been what is most interesting, especially late in the first quarter. Just times when the Knights have had momentum, weren't able to take advantage, gave it right back to Bellhaven. And just the way that Bellhaven's really been able to do whatever they want offensively, especially in the running game. We mentioned three, four different running backs that have over 40 yards rushing. You have Devin Daniels with 63, Tim Johnson with 54, Kobe Blunt with 41, and TJ Hersey with 40. And so again, really, whatever back you have in there is going to be doing some solid things for you. Here's the return from Langtree, brought down just past the 26-yard line. Yeah, you'd think at some point that maybe Bellhaven will try to go to their pass game and, and see if they can improve or learn anything there but you know if your run game is this effective you know why stop when you got a whole bunch of other running backs that you can give experience to as well right as obviously we've, we've seen they haven't put their lead back into it for too many snaps today and also you're also kind of thinking of it as you know your your offensive line is doing such a good job and there's there's a lot of pride they take in running the ball that effectively mm -hmm. and maxi at the quarterback position once again He's going to hand off up the middle. So we finally see another handoff up the middle for Southern Virginia. We haven't seen a standard handoff up the middle like that since early in the first quarter, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So really making Bellhaven respect that a little bit more, at least I think is the goal here. Yeah, and I, I think that's a good idea. I mean, might as well just go back to your lead back in, in rushing yards and touchdowns this season and, and try to go up the middle. He's got lots of strength. All right, Max is going to take this time and pitch it on the option. And flipped up in the air to, on the tackle that time is TJ Hersey. Hersey playing both ways today. Embodying his own inner Travis Hunter, for those who have been following Colorado he, University this year. <laughs> yeah, and Hersey, he's, he's impressive. He, he entered, entered today's game with 26 total tackles, so... Certainly can do it all. Yeah. <laughs> he, a coach pretty, loves pretty much a player like that. In some ways you could say a dual sport athlete, even though it's still football, but he, he really can play well on both sides of the ball. <laughs> Maxi back to pass. He's got a lot of pressure coming in. Breaks the tackle. Throws towards the sideline. Broken up, nearly intercepted by Hersey. And it was intended for Jake Shank. Yeah, I, I would like to see Jake maybe attack the ball a little more on that one. You know, obviously he saw must have seen that Maxi was in trouble a little bit, so he maybe he eased off the ball. But when Maxi got it to him, it was it was a well-thrown ball in the spot he wanted, but the defender was able to get a hand in front before um, Jake Shank got to it himself. And, of course, you do love the fact that Jake Shank, you know, came in there. He did fight for the ball and therefore forced mm -hmm. the incompletion Almost came out rather than an interception. Yep. Absolutely. So here's the punt. Another low punt. He's going to let it roll. And again, a lot of that is just making it to where it's hard to field that. And if you're a team that struggles, as they have today with open field tackling, you know, kicking it low, making it to where they have to second guess, oh, grabbing yeah. that, it's the best strategy for you. Yeah, and I, yeah, and smart play, but I think that was D grade. Just let that one go if you're Bill Haven. You know, you're in control. Right. No need to be a superhero right now because um, obviously a couple punts ago almost turned out bad for them. 
But, you know, on the other side of things, if you're Southern Virginia, keep trying that. You know, you're forcing them back a little bit further than they probably want. Mm. Um, so, yeah, good punch so far by Michael Brown. Here's Tim Johnson in the gun. And he's going to hand it off to Kobe Blunt, and he's brought down eventually in the backfield. That time by number four, Seth Dahl, freshman linebacker from Highland, Utah. And that's going to be a loss of about 10. Yeah, that's Seth Dahl. He's winning one of the leading defenders on this night's defensive squad. Second on the team in tackles, just behind Colby Hyder, the senior. And Johnson's going to go up the... Okay, hand it up up the middle, and it's going to be a maybe a gain of half a yard at most. But and you mentioned Seth Dahl. You know, he has nine tackles on the day, leading both squads in that department. Right behind him is Stockton Ferguson with eight. And those, you know, those are the plays you got to dig deep. Obviously, in addition to just being really talented runners, their running backs can break tackles too. We've seen it. Johnson throws towards the sideline. Ball Fumble. is free. And it looks like we're covered once again by Bellhaven. So back-to-back -back drives with a fumble. And past the first down marker. <laughs> right, that's another, uh, that's a killer blow right there. But again, you know, you had the drive previously in the red zone where they fumbled it and Bellhaven able to, to jump on that one. And a lot of that goes down to just, you know, there's drills like that that you go through in practice. Ball's on the ground, you die for it. You know, you work through that, and that's a disciplined team right there. Hand up, up the middle. This is Blunt once again. And he's going to get a first down. And well, that's at least two, maybe three forced fumbles now by the defense. So they're, they're getting their hands in there and, and wreaking some havoc, and then including that, that one where Bellhaven fumbled the snap a few drives ago. We got a Knight still on the field. I believe it's number 38, uh, Kavion Tucker, if I'm not mistaken. We'll be sure to let you know if that is not the case. He was in on the pile after the play, and so, again, we're not going to assume what happened there as a number of things could have happened. Slowly getting up under his own power. It's actually number 28. That is Momo Matalolo, who's made a couple plays so far today, and so he'd be... He's up on his feet now, so hopefully he is okay because that would be a tough loss for them because, again, he's such a playmaker on the defensive side. And he is walking to the sideline without assistance. So that is a good sign. Yeah, 17 tackles on the year, two interceptions as well. Certainly an asset for this nice defensive squad who, you know, Obviously, you know, looking at the score, tons of points given up, but, you know, they've had some good spurts defensively that, that you know, they've given their offensive chance, you know, to grab some momentum back, um, like that one three and out that we witnessed here inside Bellhaven's own 10 last quarter. So some good spurts by the defense for sure. Johnson completes the outside, pass midfield. And that is complete to number 10. That is Adam Blanchard. And so I like what Bellhaven just did there strategically. They saw that a defensive back went down, and so they immediately went to target the outside, try to make a play out there. And it worked out for them for a big first down. So now first down and 10 at the Knights 40. I think Devin Daniels will be in there at back, along with Blunt, as well as tight end number 22, Zach Hammett. They're going to hand it off to Blunt. Makes the defenders miss. A flag is down at the 44-yard line. That is more than definitely coming back. They're going to change the spot of the foul. 
As they are going to call it a holding on Bellhaven. March back 10 yards. But, you know, we've praised their running game so far, but, you know, Tim Johnson as well, he's been in there, had obviously the big rushing touchdown himself, but, you know, threw an absolute dot on that one passing play, that explosive pass for a touchdown. He has 111 passing yards on the first half. And you compare that to the Knights, who have a total of 11 passing yards with their two quarterbacks. That pass just a little behind his intended receiver. One of the rare times we've seen him just straight up miss a receiver so far today. He was It was intended for Daniels. It looked like a good job there by Seth Dahl to get in that passing lane and, right. and force Johnson back to the inside where his receiver wasn't. So now second down and 20. Right at midfield here. Just under six minutes to go in this first half. And if you're Southern Virginia, this half, clearly, if you're looking at the score, hasn't really gone well for you. But at this point, you can finish up these next six minutes, try to hold them to no points if you can. Then looks like he was tackled by his own offensive lineman, from our angle at least. My goodness. I think Washington might have gotten there too with the big hit. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, lots of speed on that play, and he just got in the way and disrupted all of that. Good play. It was also uh, Case and Spackman who got in on that tackle, but from our angle, it almost looked like the back had bounced off of offensive yeah. linemen. I think it was uh, number 78, Kendrian Boatman. Johnson back to pass. He's going to throw deep. Overthrown Overthrown. across the middle of the field. He had number 18. Nigel Owens open, and that's been an open route for Bellhaven so far today. They've only targeted a couple of times, especially in that one deep touchdown that you re referenced earlier, but they're really able to beat uh, defensive backs on the inside right at the seam. Well, and that, you know, they, they were in the same formation as they have been when they put that fullback in motion right next to the quarterback, right. but this time the fullback went running straight to the outfield, and so it kind of maybe – flustered the, the secondary, a little bit of the Knights to free up that space. So some, some good play calling by Bellhaven on that one. Only the second punt for Bellhaven in this first half. Be caught with a fair catch here. On the fair catch was number 31, Bridger Hatch. Excuse me, that's actually number 21, Isaac McMullen, the leading receiver for Southern Virginia. We've talked all day about him and how much of a weapon he is and again Bellhaven has done a great job at limiting his production in this first half we'll see Isaiah Maxey once again come onto the field at quarterback for Southern Virginia it'll be interesting to see if we see Hackey for the rest of the game yeah obviously coaching staff probably not pleased after those couple of fumbles and just wanting to change things up Maxey just basically having to throw it away Try to avoid the safety there. And again, whenever the Knights quarterbacks, whether it be Hackey or Maxey, whenever they've rolled outside the pocket, that's really the danger zone against this Bellhaven defense. Their defensive ends and outside linebackers are really able to fly in there and cause disruption and force you to make mistakes and try to throw on the run and try to basically just try to fight for your life while trying to make a completion at the same time, which doesn't necessarily go over very well most of the time. Mm -hmm. Now here's second down and 10 inside their own 10-yard line. Maxie stepping up. Good job of covering up the football as he's getting sacked. Loss of about two. Yeah, yeah. lots of speed on that front line of, of Bellhaven. You know, it looked like Maxie may have, have a little bit of room to scramble and free up some space for himself, but they got to him really quick on either side. And that was Carlton Brown in on that sack. So third down and 12 with four and a half minutes remaining in this first half. And batted down at the line of scrimmage intended for Johansson, who's been the main target pretty much for all the completions so far today for the Knights. 
So fourth down and 12, and the Knights will have to punt it away in dangerous territory. And again, this Knights passing attack just really hasn't been able to get anything going. A total of 11 yards mm -hmm. in this first half. It's just really been a struggle. And then you have Keevan Williams with two rushing yards, Domo Dwyer with one, and then you have a couple of running backs not really able to get anything positive going at all. And here's the punt. This one a little higher than previous ones, but it's going to take a Southern Virginia bounce inside Bellhaven territory. And once again, you have uh, uh, Deontay Gallishaw wisely just letting it go. And if you're Bellhaven, I'm thinking in this drive, you're just handing it off every down. Pretty much. Just letting the clock wind down, running attacks working for you, and you only have four yeah. minutes to the half. Yeah, not only does it wind on the clock, but it's, you know, working all day long. Right. So, so why change it? Give some more running backs some, some reps as well. You got Blunt in there in the I formation. Bellhaven's had a couple of different formations they've had so far today. You had the heavy back set, basically similar to the pistol. Now you have the I formation or offset I. And off to Blunt on the misdirect. Brought down after a gain of about eight yards on that carry. You know, watching Colby Blunt run the ball, you know, maybe it's just the, the last name that's made me think of this, but I'm thinking of LeGarrette Blunt from the NFL. <laughs> the yeah. journeyman running back, multiple time Super Bowl winner, guy who runs extremely tough, and that's exactly how Blunt is. He has speed to him, but the main thing is that he is just really hard to tackle on first contact. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you talk about being an efficient runner. It seems like, you know, the exception of this run that, you know, each attempt they're getting, you know, at least 8, 10 yards. Yeah. Which is why Blunt's almost at 1,000 rushing yards, uh, net yards so far this season. The, the, the QB sneak here, make it a first down. The last play was made by Colby Hyder in the backfield as he tackled Blunt. And that's the thing, too, is if your your team is really good at running the football and you have a solid offensive line, you have a one yard to go, that's child's play to you. Oh, I mean, it's much absolutely. like the Eagles in the NFL. You have Just one like yard to go, it. it's like, no problem. We get that all the time. Johnson throwing to the right side. And that's why it's so important for the for the defense to get ahead of their offense and either get a tackle floor loss or, or stop at the line of scrimmage because you know, especially on your side of the field, if it comes down a third and two, third and one, third and three, or a fourth and three, they're going for it. Right. And they they have a high rate of conversion on that as well. And that pass was intended for the fullback number 48, Bogan Brewer. Junior from Greenville, Mississippi. The pass is once again a little behind him from Johnson. Mm -hmm. He's had a couple passes where it's behind his receivers. Brewer was trying to make a pretty incredible one-handed catch behind him, mm -hmm. not able to do so. Second down and 10. Once again, going to hand it off to Blunt. Going to head towards the far sideline. He's got space. He's going to just escort himself out after a solid first down run. Yeah, that was a good block by Reginald Garrison as well, number 31 of Bellhaven, to kind of force that. DB back to the inside and get free up some space for his running back. So now first down and 10 at the Knights, 26-yard line. And now just looking at the stats for rushing, Kobe Blunt now leading in that category with 74, Devin Daniels with 63, Tim Johnson with 57, and TJ Hersey with 40. And so if you really wanted to for Bellhaven at this rate, you could have three receivers each rushing for 100 yards apiece. Mm -hmm. Which obviously things will slow down if the lead continues to grow. The things will slow down. Johnson passed to the left side. Nearly complete. Could have been close to a touchdown, but intended for tight end Nate Lavender. No, excuse me, that's Zach Hammett. Zach Hammett, number 22. And that last run put Blunt over 900 total yards for the season. So that much closer to getting 1,000 on the year for him. And again, well-deserved. I mean, he's had a fantastic year so far. I mean, we've talked about him for a reason, right? I mean, they also have one more game on the year. Another handoff that time, gain of about six. 
that time it was uh, Deontay Galashaw. But yeah, next week, Bellhaven will play against Brevard College. And again, if they keep up this pace, he'll have 1,000 yards rushing pretty easily. If not, again, who knows the second half. We'll see what happens. But Johnson here with the designed quarterback run. And he's going to break through to the end zone, breaking a couple arm tackles in the process. And, you know, kind of like we were saying, Quinn, took off about three and a half minutes off the clock. So now a minute 38 left in this first half. Mm -hmm. Pretty much doing exactly what we thought they would. Yeah, you know, just wind the clock down, go back to their bread and butter, which is the run offense. And again, Johnson, you know, it, it, and being a really good rushing team just shows you the discipline that these, these guys have as well, you know. Only a couple of holding calls maybe so far, and, and you could even say that's uncharacteristic for them, but um, just a really solid job by the offensive line and all those blockers clearing the way for their running backs. And that point after is good. Make it 40-0 to zero in favor of the Blazers of Bellhaven University. And so they will kick off to Southern Virginia. And so Southern Virginia will receive the second half kickoff as Bellhaven won the toss at the beginning and elect to receive. So here's the thing with this drive is that you only have a minute and a half. You know, you'd have to have a lot of things go your way more for this possession to result in points. But what you can do is try to establish some. I'd imagine they'll hand it off a couple times. Try to again to get more in the rhythm of that run game that they're used to. You know, that being a big part of their identity if you're Southern Virginia. And try to build up yardage, positive yardage gains for people like Alex Langtree and uh, Keevan Williams. And then just go into halftime and then recuperate. Mm -hmm. You know, because again, a 40 to 0 lead at halftime or a deficit at halftime, you kind of just have to sit down, breathe, and then try to come back and formulate a good drive. Because that's really all I can do at this point. It's just next drive. What can we do better this next drive? There's so much you make up with 40 points, but just take it one drive at a time. Nearly fumbling that return here. That's Williams. Brings it out to the 27 yard line. Yeah, and, and going off what you said, Dawson, you know, not too much is, at all has gone right in the offense. So on, right. on the bright side, you know, you know what hasn't really worked. And honestly, they still haven't really gone too much to, to Keevan Williams down the middle. Right. Um, and, or just generally just handing the ball off to him. So um, that's also one option you can go back to entering the second half of play. Um, then, of course, you know, you just really need to find some sort of way to establish that run game. Because, you know, if they're not respecting that, they're going to be all over those wide receivers as they have been all day. Short pass complete to the outside. Solid gain. About eight yards there completed to Scott Dupay. Was one receiving touchdown on the year. And now you see Bellhaven's defense. They're very spread out. They're not going to allow anything silly down the field. Mm -hmm. And so for me, honestly, if you have that situation where the – the middle of their defense is so stout and has been so aggressive against the run. Now that they're all spread out, I'd say, again, like we were talking about, a couple handoffs, get a couple chunk yardage plays because your offensive line, you can block three defensive linemen. Mm -hmm. You can move them around. Absolutely. Create some running lanes and then go from there and then make their defensive backs tackle you down the field. Exactly, because even if you're not, if they're not pressing, um, that's still going to give you some sort of confidence you know, as an offensive lineman or as a runner that you know you can find your way through some holes and get something going for your offense. Max is going to take off and run. He's got a first down. He's going to slide down around the 42-yard line. Let's see if they do hurry up or if they take a timeout. Looks like they're going to hurry it up here. And the clock stops for the chains to move. Actually, they started the clock here. Minute 15 left. Max is going to throw it to the left side. Forward, forward, Missing forward. a tackle here. Oh, there he goes. He's got some blockers down the field. He's going to go out of bounds after a first down. What a run after the catch by Domo Dwyer, making four defenders miss. Yeah, I was worried at first that he was going to go backward after the contact and, and lose his, his forward progress, but um, a good play nonetheless to get, get rid of those three or four defensive backs and free up some space for himself. And again, just able to make four defenders miss on that play, tripping over themselves. And that is their third first down of the first half. And again, Dwyer fighting for every single inch of that play. It's now a minute and five left. Maxi throws to the inside. What a catch! Yeah, that was, that was 
to the outside of it. It almost looked like it was going into the arms of the defender, but a good catch to reach over and snag it. And that's a timeout now by Southern Virginia with 56 seconds left in this first half. That reception was from Jaron Dixon. And like you said, it was a little to the inside and almost kind of got flashbacks to, what was it, Super Bowl 43, Patriots, Seahawks. Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler. <laughs> a little similar vibes there, but again, Dixon able to get in there and really snag that for that completion of about five yards. And so now, again, this is the best drive Southern Virginia's had all and, game long. Yeah, and it's been in the hurry-ups. They've looked really good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who knows, man, that's something you kind of have to address later on. It's like, hey, maybe we just operate better in a faster pace. And sometimes that's the that, sometimes that's the truth. Sometimes you just think more clearly when you're in a pressure situation, trying to move the ball down the field. Yeah, and of course, you know, the defense of Bellhaven, they've been, you know, pretty relaxed and, and slowed down all day. So yeah. it's a bit of a shock to the system maybe that they're in the hurry up now and, you know, having some pressure applied to them so their DBs aren't getting set exactly how they want. They're playing off of them a little bit. And when you're playing defense against the two-minute drill, you know, you kind of put on your heels a little bit. Some pressure, Maxi stepping up, throwing down the field. Nearly caught, but a flag is thrown. It. It'll be pass interference. Number 32, uh, Khalid Rawls is incensed at that call. Yeah, I, I guess he might have gotten over top of the arms there and didn't allow um, the receiver to extend much. Um, I mean, again, we don't have a view here that's as close, but it's a little bit of a push. Not necessarily the most egregious thing we have seen, but it's definitely not a surprising one they're going to call it. Yeah, it was, yeah good, it was good defense, but it just was a little bit, you know, to all over him in front and indeed that will be against Khalid Rawls so now first down Southern Virginia with 50 seconds in the half remaining and again it goes back to what we were saying is that before this drive it's you have to have one solid drive to end the half one solid drive go into halftime with some momentum and then figure what you're going to do with your first drive of the second half right you still have a lot of ground to make up for obviously mm -hmm. but you got to start somewhere you do, and, and it better that it's the last drive, so it's fresh in your mind heading into the second half than maybe like the first drive even. Maxi moves to the outside. He's going to run it out of bounds. And interesting decision there. Just at that point, he kind of just had to throw it away. Yeah. I but mean, it's going to lose a couple yards. He, he was definitely looking towards the end zone, it looked like, but there are four defenders of Rip Bellhaven surrounding two Knights receivers, so really nothing he could do there. But yeah. Uh, and I know there were some uh, Bellhaven fans here in the audience that wanted a holding call on Michael Ellis on the right side. And they maybe could have a case there. I mean, he almost kind of looked like after the fact that he was bringing down the defensive end as Max was going out to the outside. As you know, we've talked about, whenever the quarterbacks for Southern Virginia have gone to the outside, it's been a danger zone for them. But second down and 13. A screen pass here to the outside. And it's going to gain maybe a yard. So now third down and 12 mm -hmm. with 38 seconds. So all of a sudden, the Knights have kind of hit a wall. Got a couple of different substitutions going on here. We'll see Langtree come back onto the field. We haven't seen too much of him since the first couple of plays in this first half. Yeah. You, need, you know, don't need to go deep quite yet. You know, still got another down after this that certainly they'll use. Yeah, you got to target the sideline, and they're going to do reverse here. Bellhaven is all over it. Brought down by number 51. That is Tyler Miller. Yeah, you, you could tell that, you know, after that first pitch even to Alex Langtree that there was a, there was a rusher coming from the near side, and, you know, he wasn't going to have any space to either run or throw whatever he was thinking, so. Basically exactly what you didn't want except for a turnover. And the clock is still running. The Knights have yet to call a timeout. Not really sure. I mean, it is fourth down, so I guess what they're wanting to do is make sure that they can just run the one play, no chance for Bellhaven to get it back. Yes, exactly. Yeah, r run that one play and, you know, either try to find some way to get to the end zone or or some open field. So, yeah, not a, not a bad idea at all by Coach Dupay. I, I do wonder about that reverse call because we have seen the Knights call uh, play the reverse a couple times this year, and each time it has been kind of easy to read. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those plays where very few teams can pull it off to where it's unexpected or 
They pull it off so fast that you can't really tell where it's going. And, again, it just hasn't really worked out for Southern Virginia to pull it out in a situation like that where your passing game was actually going pretty well that drive in comparison to previous possessions. Yeah, it's certainly one of those plays where, you know, if it works, you know, you're a genius, right? And yeah. if it doesn't, you just <laughs> kind of seem like you're a goat. And so, I mean, yeah, I, I don't – obviously, Coach Dupay knows better than we do. But, right. um, yeah, it seemed like, you know, if you're moving forward, just go back to what you were doing to, to keep that forward progress. And instead of going backwards and losing 10 yards and making it more difficult for the field goal unit that they brought out now. And number 36, Jerem Reed, will be attempting the field goal here from the 42. It'll be a... And he's got a leg. He does indeed have a leg. It's a 52-yard attempt and blocked by Bellhaven. And he'll go out of bounds to end the first half. And just like that, a positive possession that the Knights had where Isaiah Maxey had 29 passing yards on that possession and in a disappointing blocked field goal. And again, you're trying to go into the half with a positive play, and Bellhaven is able to do that for themselves right there with that blocked kick. Just an unfortunate drive for Southern Virginia. Yeah, an excellent drive that obviously did not end in the way you wanted. You know, still zero points on the board, but you know, there are some goods that you can take from the end of that half. Um, obviously, you know, they're able to establish a solid passing game, but still just nothing running wise. I think they have a um, negative seven total yards in rushing so far and um, not and even including that loss of yardage to the reverse play. Exactly. So e even even worse than that. So certainly def something they're they're gonna have to um, rethink heading into the second half and if they're gonna score any points it's either find a way to improve your rushing game or maybe even just go in the hurry up because <laughs> right. that seemed to be the only thing that was working and put the defenders on their heels. Absolutely and so with that we'll go into halftime with a score Blazers 40 Knights 0 in this USA South Conference matchup. In the second half I'll be joined by Nicholas O'Connor but for the time being Please enjoy this presentation of Southern Virginia's cheer squad. We'll be back for the second half action.
from the 2015 album, Death of the Asteroid. The first hit song the band was nothing short of victorious.
Catalasuki and Hibachi Express, the Rokasu Partners and Cornerstone Bank. Big thank you to all our sponsors.
back to Knight Stadium for the second half of this USA South football matchup between the Blazers of Belhaven University and your Knights of Southern Virginia. The score stands 40 to zero in favor of the Blazers. And in the second half, I'm joined by our good friend, Nicholas O'Connor. Nick, it's great to have you here. And uh, it's been a rough half for Southern Virginia, but the exact opposite for Belhaven so far. Yes, well, first off, thank you. Uh, glad to be here. Yes, uh, Belhaven has uh, certainly put a game together. They have built the wall and made the Knights pay for it. Yes, indeed they have. And you and I were talking during halftime that Bell Haven approaching 300 total rushing yards in the first half. Southern Virginia 
after that last uh, reverse they tried to pull off. Negative double digits and rushing. It's been a hard time getting that run game established, especially considering that the run game has really been the Knights' safety net on their offense. So again, offense has been off and on because the young quarterbacks, Isaiah Maxey and uh, Lachlan Hackey, who have showed promise in certain games, but again, being young quarterbacks, it's hard to maintain that consistency. But again, we talked about the way that Bellham's really been able to dominate. I do want to make a correction of myself from the first half. We talked about how Bellham was using three running backs. Actually, not the case. They were using two. Uh, Colby Blunt, actually, wearing number four. His jersey was scrunched up, so it looked like number 11, so we mischaracterized that a couple of times. But speaking of Colby Blunt, he finished that first half with 114 rushing yards, coming in this game with 828 on the season, closing in on that 1,000-yard mark. Yes, if uh, Colby Blunt can just manage to get just about 60 more rushing yards this game, he will surpass that 1,000-yard mark for the season. All with one more game remaining on their schedule. So if he doesn't get it today, odds are he'll more than likely get it next week against Brevard College. And since the Blazers had won the toss and received in the first half, the Knights were received to start off this second half. And the Knights had a solid drive until the blocked field goal on that last possession in the first half. So really... One thing that really worked for them more is Isaiah Max, who's really able to get into a rhythm in the passing game. Yes, a couple of good things going there for the Knights at the end. Um, ultimately, that got turned around. Uh, so we'll see what they can get going here. And so here's the kickoff for Bell Haven. Have Langtree and Williams to return. Nice high kick. Here's Williams. He's got some blockers ahead of him, got a little bit of space, and tripped up and will fall around the 28-yard line. Williams is a little slow to get up, but he will get back up. And before this drive begins, I want to give a shout out to our athletic sponsors here, local businesses in Buena Vista, Virginia, including Cornerstone Bank, Mill Creek Orthodontics, River Crossing Apartments, Straws, Drinks and Eats, where they have trivia nights this coming Friday, and Grace Automotive, where SVU students and staff can receive 10% off their vehicle maintenance needs, Papa John's Pizza, locally owned and operated, Vinyl Cuts, The Beef, Sweet Souvenirs, and Katana Sushi and Hibachi Express. Here is Isaiah Maxey on the first snap of the second half. He's going to throw it to his left side. That is to Johansson. He has been the primary target so far in this game for Southern Virginia. Gain of two yards. And if you'd like to partner with Knights Athletics like these businesses that I just mentioned and promote your business to the Knight Nation, please contact Brett Schroeder at 801 633 1894. That's 801 633 1894. So a two yard gain to start things off for Southern Virginia. Yes, and Johansson been an excellent target all year long. Been able to rack up a number of receptions and receiving yards. I've actually had the chance to talk to Johansson's dad on a couple occasions here coming to Knight Stadium. We've been able to talk about his production for this team. My, um, Maxi back to pass, rolling out to his right. Complete along the sideline, and it will be called a completion. Gain of about four on that catch. A little bit of a curl there, it seemed. Not quite as many yards as they would have pleased. He had to come back a little bit further than he would have liked. And that is Scott Dupay on the receiving end of that one. Make it a little bit more of a manageable third down situation. Third down and four for the Knights. And, you know, we saw Hackey start off the first half for Southern Virginia like he had all season, and then Maxey came in the last couple drives, and we'll start off this second half. I imagine we might end up seeing Maxey for the rest of this game, just by the way things are going. Maxey throws to the left side, and it's tipped and intercepted by the Blazers. I believe that was number 80 for the Blazers that tipped up in the air. That is Jimmy Bird. Now, Dawson, just to, to mention to you here, the Blazers are actually averaging an interception a game coming into this game. Indeed, they are doing a great job of forcing those turnovers, and that's a big reason why they are 6-1 and one going into this. And again, tipped, trying to pass that to the left side, up in the air, and it's tip drill at that point. Just whoever can get to a first, and there's a lot of defenders in the area. So Bellhaven able to force the early turnover in the second half, make it first down and 10 at the Knights' 30-yard line. And, you know, again, you talk about averaging an interception a game, as defensive coordinator, you look at that and you're saying, hey, we're disrupting the opposing offense. We're giving ourselves extra chances. And the game of college football, giving yourself extra possessions is one of the main things that can turn things around in a game if you're down or just building up momentum. Here's Blunt on the carry. He's got nothing in front of him. Finally forced out around the four-yard line, being prevented from scoring for a third time today. 
in such a strong run, run by Blunt. And it would seem, watching Blunt, that he has that tendency as he breaks through the middle always to cut out to the outside there. Um, definitely prefers to just be able to step out as opposed to taking the contact out wide. Indeed, and I think all the backs for Bellhaven have done a great job bouncing it to the outside. And a lot of that is just because they have that great speed. They can outrun those defensive linemen on the outside and then able to make a couple defenders miss in open space. So first down and goal for the Blazers here at the five-yard line. The Blazers have a chance to extend their lead, which now sits at 40-0. to zero. Johnson looking to throw across the middle. Incomplete intended for number 10, Adam Blanchard. And as has been mentioned previously in this game, Dawson, uh, Bellhaven has been excellent all year long in the red zone. Um, very difficult to stop once they get inside of that 20-yard line. And again, a lot of that comes down to execution. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to op operate when you have several uh, tens of yards behind the defense or behind you. You know, you can really open up your playbook, but when you're in such condensed space and you're still able to capitalize like that, like you said, very good executing. Johnson able to fall into the end zone, diving in for a touchdown. Johnson once again using his feet to make plays happen. Johnson, such a terrific threat for Bellhaven. We've seen him throw that deep ball perfect spiral down into the end zone today. We've seen him use his speed and agility to work past the offensive line. Um, and here, scoring a touchdown of his own once again. I mean, a true Swiss Army knife of a quarterback, if you've ever seen one. And we have a Blazer offensive lineman down on the field at around the four-yard line. Not really able to see what happened there, but on run plays like that, there's a lot of movement going on, a lot of bodies falling all over the place. It's impossible to know exactly what occurred on that play. We'll let you know who it is as soon as we're able to tell. Coach for Bellhaven wanted to give him some space there. And so now the score stands 46 to zero, point after pending for the Blazers. And he's able to get up Still trying to see who it is. I believe it is number 76, Zay Stevens. He, with some assistance, he'll make his way to the sideline. We certainly hope he is all right. And the trainer will certainly have a look at him. And, uh, we'll get some more news moving forward, hopefully. Now, this is where it gets a little bit exciting here for the Knights. The Knights have done, I would say, excellently thus far on special teams. Indeed they have, they disrupted two PATs so far, which is why the score is kind of interesting. 46 to zero at this point. Point after is up and good. And a lot of those pressures on those PATs have come from, you, know, you have Colby Knight that came in there, then Kiki Washington as well coming off that outside edge. But since those first two PATs, you know, Bellhaven has done a better job at securing that outside edge, blocking wise. And so now the score stands 47 to zero in favor of the Blazers just early on in the second half. And you know, Quinn and I were talking in first half how you kind of have to approach the game with a sense of, be like Dory from Finding Nemo, have short-term memory. You know, each quarter, approach like a new game. You gotta make it to where, you know, you just make it to where, hey, how can we win this quarter and how can we win that quarter? Especially in a game like this where you're down several scores, 47 to zero. At this point, you kind of know, okay, winning the game, a bit out of reach, but what can we do to be better as a team on this next possession? What can we do to win this small part of the game, offensively or defensively? And especially when you have a situation where we talked about, you know, Coach Dupay, his first year back in a couple of years, and reestablishing a culture and trying to build that up. And it's one of those things where, again, you have to learn small lessons here and there, even in some of the most, you know, dire circumstances, being down 47 to zero. Here's the kick. and has fielded a solid return here to the 30 before he is pushed out of bounds. That is number 19, Jay Long. And there looked to be a, a bit of confusion between Long and Langtree as to who would be taking in that kick. Indeed, they kind of had some communication there going on, but fortunately for the Knights, it didn't result in a fumble, which oftentimes with miscommunication, that can tend to be the case. But now first and 10 for Southern Virginia at their own 30 yard line. Got trips right. 
Gonna run the option here. Pitch to Williams, he's got some space. He's got a first down run, the best run of the game for him today. And Williams has proven himself a, a powerful runner uh, throughout the course of this season. Definitely making a, a name for himself on this team. He absolutely has, and with that, you know, before that run, he had two positive rushing yards on the day. He'll add another 12 or 13, depending on what they spot him at. It is now first down and 10 at their own 43. The Knights rushing attack certainly being bottled up. And just like that, as you mentioned that, Nick, bottled up with maybe half a yardage of gain. We got an offensive lineman for Southern Virginia down on the field. I believe this is number 76, Michael Ellis. So both 76s for each team going down in subsequent drives. So as we uh, we wait for this to, to resolve, um, Dawson, if you're Coach Dupay, um, what have you said to these Knights as they, they headed into the locker room for halftime? What did you do to prepare them for this half? Well, honestly, if you're looking at the situation as a coach, I mean, it's you can go a couple different ways. You can kind of tell them, hey, obviously a rough half. Nothing much we can do about that. And that, that's the thing is, like, you can't focus on what went wrong in the first half. You a couple turnovers. You know, we mentioned the situation where the Knights were able to, you know, force a punt, and then immediately they had a fumble, and then they lost the momentum. I think you just tell them, we got to play smart. We got to play smart. Hold on to the football. If we get momentum, let's not give it back, okay? And because with momentum, you got to ride it out. You can't just give it right back. You got to ride it out, use it for all it's, it's worth, up, get a couple points on the board, get a good drives going, and – uh, off to Blyman, able to get back to the sideline in second and nine now. But again, just basically saying, hey, let's control what we can control and not focus on what has gone wrong so far. And I think looking at this, I feel like this offense is kind of doing that. They're doing a little bit better than this half. Yardage-wise, Williams gets another two-yard gain on that carry. And again, as a coach, just kind of focus on ways to get better. At this point, again, you're you're down 47-0. to zero. You're thinking, okay, how can we make it to where we come out of this with our heads held high? It's very easy to hang your head low, think the world's ending, right? You gotta think, what can we do to make these guys realize, hey, we did some positive things today in spite of the final result. So now third down and seven here for the Knights offense, approaching midfield. Maxi rolling to his right side, got protection. Throwing in coverage, that is intercepted by Bellhaven. And still on his feet, this is number 28. This is Fabian Carter all the way down to the eight yard line, or actually gonna say he was out at the 13 yard line. And that situation where Max was trying to throw into triple coverage, really trying to force it in there. And a lot of times you try to force him into coverage like that, that's gonna be the result in an interception. Fortunately for them, it wasn't a pick six, but close enough. Yes. I, and I believe uh, McMullen ended up making the tackle on that play. Indeed, making the hustle play to go over and bring him down to where it's first down and 10 at the Knights' 13, excuse me, 14-yard line. That's where they have it positioned. I should say it on the 13-yard line. Now, to go back to your point um, from earlier, Dawson, so yes, I do believe that this, this Knight squad probably should be looking for small victories here and there, looking for positive notes to be able to take and move forward with. You got Brock Morris, a quarterback, once again for Bellhaven. He was in a one play in the first half, pitch to Kobe Blunt. And he's got some blockers, gonna waltz into the end zone, touchdown Blazers, and he was able to zigzag through blocks in that, that, that play. And again, a lot of great effort on the outside. And one play touchdown drive for the Blazers. A couple of missed tackles in there, just able to, to shed off those, the hands of those defenders like they were nothing. Yeah. And that's, again, that's been the story of the game for Bellhaven today is making defenders miss, breaking tackles. That time, you know, Blunt didn't really have to break any tackles, just kind of weaving in and out of blocks. And I believe. The team is gathering around Kobe Blunt because I believe that puts him over 1,000 yards rushing on the season, if I'm not mistaken. We mentioned that being a possibility in the second half for Kobe Blunt. I mean, that's the thing that makes sense, most sense to me on the sideline over there. 
And so congratulations to Kobe Blunt. We've talked about him all game long of how great of a runner he is, following his blocks as well as you know, his breaking tackles left and right. Score now stands 53 to zero with the point after pending. Kick is up, and it's good. Make it 54 to nothing. Now I will say, um, at least as far as the stats that I've received, I believe that their celebration is a bit premature. Um, perhaps they're using his um, net yardage, net gain, yeah. um, as opposed to the net total. Um, I believe he still has about 20 more yards to gain in order to uh, to achieve that net positive yardage. Right. A thousand yard season. Which I mean, you can basically celebrate both accomplishments at this point in this game if you continue going the way you're going early on here in the third quarter. So the Knights will receive this kickoff after the touchdown drive or a touchdown play rather from Bellhaven. And now you're in a situation where Maxi, you know, he was trying to force a play on the outside, ended up being an interception. But for Southern Virginia, the pass has really been the only thing that's truly worked for you, especially that two-minute drill before the halftime. You know, spreading the ball out, quick pass to the outside, letting your receivers work in open space, which they haven't really been able to do all game long outside of that. But here is the kickoff. He boomed this one. Fielded by Langtree at the four-yard line. And he is hit hard at the 17-yard line. That is number four, Christian Lewis flew in there like a bullet. Langtree absolutely blown up on that one. Uh, but seems to have sprung right back up and able to get off the field under his own power. I mean, that's, that's one of those hits that you watch and you're saying, hey, I'm glad that I'm not the one down there taking that hit. I, I wouldn't be getting up. I'm not as tough as Langtree. I'd still be down there on the field just kind of basking in my pain. But first down and 10 for Southern Virginia. Hopefully Langtree is okay. Went over to the sideline, just kind of relaxing a little bit after that play. I can just imagine you down there now, single tear <laughs> running down your face. Oh, it wouldn't be a single tear. There'd be multiple <laughs> tears going down my face at that point. If I'm able to breathe, that is. Max is throwing to the outside. That's Johansson once again. They've run the similar play a couple of different times with a very similar result, maybe a gain of two or three yards on each attempt. And again, that situation is just getting an easy completion, getting a couple of small yardage, and then making it to where you can maybe get a run handoff on the next play, maybe get two or three more yards, make it a more manageable third down situation. But now we have two receivers on either side. Unfortunately, um, those two or three yard plays end up making it to where they need to pass when it comes down to third down. They don't really have the option because they need that chunk yardage. Try to throw it down the field to Johansson down the far sideline. A little bit overthrown, but fortunately for him because Johansson had a really hard time breaking free from his defender. That was defensive back number 18, uh, Cornelius Clay. He was right on Johansson the entire time. So Johansson would have had a hard time really going up for a catch, even if it was a little bit more accurate. So now, like you said, now you're in a third down and eight situation deep in your own territory. The kind of situation where you have to give Maxi a little bit more time in the pocket. Well, and the running attack hasn't been able to get this kind of yardage all game. Right. So you have to pass here. Collins on the reception here. He's got some blockers ahead of him. Hurdles a defender, gets really close to the first down marker. Hey, Walter. They're going to give him the first down. What an impressive play from Collins. I mean, he got the reception, had some blockers ahead of him. And I got to credit all the blockers out there, the receivers, getting an open space. He got a defender down for Bellhaven. And then Walter Collins with the hurdle just to get the extra yardage for the first down. What a play from Collins. Such a display of athleticism. And why not? You know, when you're down to the, at this level, um, at this point in the game, you're out here having fun at this point. Right. What, what do you have to lose? Exactly. I mean, the freshman making the play, and we have a defender down, like I said, for Bellhaven. This is number 49. It would appear that we do not have a number 49 listed on the rosters that we have received. So we'll wait to see if we can get a name for you folks watching back home. He is slowly getting up. And he will be getting off the field under his own power. Good to see. But again, going back to that play from Walter Collins. My goodness. Like, it, 
the Knights have tried plays like that all game long, getting those quick passes to the outside, whether it beats the halfbacks or Johansson on the far side. And again, a couple of yards, but then Walter Collins has the blockers in front of him, sees the field, sees the defender flying in low, hurdles over top of him. You always love to see a good hurdle play. Yeah, my goodness, got some air time. He really did. I mean, sign him up for the basketball team coach. Got another quick pass to the outside. Trying to make a defender miss. Getting maybe a yard gain on that one. That is number 21, Isaac McMullen. So now second down and nine. And so as I was saying earlier, Dawson, at this point in the game, um, perhaps we open up the playbook a little bit, try some things that uh, you know, perhaps we haven't thus far, uh, see what we can do. And honestly, a thing for me is they're Lining up in the tight formation here looks like it might be another option play as they tend to run that out of this formation. And it'll be Maxi with the carry going for for about two or three yards on that one. And for me as a coach, as an offensive coordinator specifically, I'm kind of having the mentality of playing keep away. You know, your defense is having a hard time stopping Bell Heyman's offense. And at this point, you're trying to basically make it to where you're getting your offense more in rhythm, but at the same time, eating away at that clock. Because again, You'd want to come back in this situation, but it's 54 to nothing. Very, very unlikely. And so you're just trying to whittle away some clock, give your defense a bit of a breather, because they really have not had a chance to catch their breath the entire game long. Maxi back to pass. Throws a quick to the outside, and that is complete for a first down. That is to Dwyer. And Maxi had two defenders in his face, ready to hit him. That's, again, for a young quarterback like that to, in the face of a hit, to throw it out there for first down, fantastic play from Maxi. Well, and this is something that I've talked about, loving about this night squad um, since day one. Both Hacky and Maxi are so young, underclassmen, um, yeah. and so they'll have a number of years to play with this Knights team and develop with this Knights team. And when you have a quarterback situation where you can rely on both your quarterbacks in the quarterback room and you can build a team around them, that makes it so much easier than being a team with a lot of outside weapons but no field general to help them out, you know. And again, we've seen both Hackey and Maxi lead this offense in very positive ways on several occasions. Right, and so by the time that these two reach their senior years, they're going to have two individuals that know the entirety of the playbook that can lead yeah. this squad. Absolutely, and we have two receivers on the left side. Maxi back to pass once again, looking down the field, steps up in the pocket, got a flag thrown, maybe a holding. He was out of bounds. Yeah, flag at around the line of scrimmage. That's definitely coming back. Yes, and I was going to say, it was looking like quarterback was getting better protection than he has most all game. Yeah. Um, and with the holding flag now, we can see why. That was number 63, Hugo Ortega Sanchez, guilty of the holding call that time. And you're absolutely right, you know, that's one of the plays where Maxi really had time to really survey the field, look at all of his reads, step up in the pocket a little bit. Unfortunately, results in a holding penalty, make it second down and 15. I have loved the adjustment from Maxi. I'm um, switching from the standard drift to the outside that they, mm. they like to do to taking that um, time to step up in the pocket and feel the protection of his line. That's definitely something they talked about at halftime is that their defensive ends are really doing a great job of getting to the outside. And Collins is going to get the handoff, trying to follow his blocks. He interestingly goes to the outside as Johansson was trying to block his defenders to the outside, which results in Collins getting tackled after a gain of a couple. But you're absolutely right, Nick, in how Maxi definitely sees that it's becoming what you typically want a passing pocket to be, a U-shape. And so you got to step up into the open area in front of you, and that's resulted in some success here in this half yardage wise. Now, Dawson, I do have a theory as to why that running play went so wide on the previous play. Um, it appeared to be an option. Yeah. Maxi stepping up here, throwing deep to the side. They're gonna call that a catch. That's complete to Isaac McMullen. The refs are talking it over on the sideline. They initially call it, they're gonna say it was incomplete after the fact. 
I thought maybe McMullen had gotten a foot down on that sideline. Well, and perhaps a, uh, a replay at home would prove otherwise. Um, but as I was saying on the previous play here, um, it seemed that they were running the option there. And Maxie was taking a bit too long to, to take that read. Um, and the two, Collins and Maxie, ran together for a number of yards down towards the sideline before Maxie, Maxie ultimately decided just to hand it off to Collins. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're absolutely right on that option play. We actually got to see some up-close a re replay here of that last pass play. Indeed, his foot was just on the white of the sideline. So very, very close. McMullen really fighting for that extra yardage. And a fair catch. It's going to roll inside the 10 and into the end zone. So close to be able to pin them back very deep into their own territory. But it will go back to the Blazers of Bellhaven University with 6 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in this third quarter. And so I wonder also if we will see quarterback number 14, Brock Morris, come back onto the field for the Blazers. We saw him on their one-play touchdown drive, which resulted in Colby Blunt getting that rushing touchdown. And so I believe that is indeed the case. Well, Johnson has certainly put in his work today. Absolutely. Imagine they're giving him an opportunity to rest and getting a couple extra reps here for uh, Brock Morris. They're going to hand off up the middle. This is the latest running back we've seen in this running back carousel for Bellhaven. This is number 25, Caleb Galishaw. He was still going for a couple of yards. We got another offensive lineman down for Bellhaven, number 73, David Turner. You know, Galishaw has done some great work on the, on the return, both punt and kick return today. Looks like they're going to give... Colby Blunt a little bit of a rest with him in the backfield. And while we're waiting to see what happens with offensive lineman number 73, David Turner, I want to once again give a shout out to our athletic partners here at Southern Virginia. Here, a lot of local businesses in Buena Vista, Virginia, being Cornerstone Bank, Mill Creek Orthodontics, River Crossing Apartments, Straws, Drinks and Eats, uh, which again, we mentioned there's going to have trivia night on Friday. Grace Automotive, where SVU students and staff can receive 10% off their vehicle maintenance needs. Papa John's Pizza, locally owned and operated. Vinyl Cuts, the Beef Sweet Souvenir, so I can say that word right. And Katani Sushi and Hibachi Express. And once again, if you'd like to partner with Knights Athletics to promote your business to the Knight Nation, please contact Brett Schroeder at 801-633-1894. So first down and 10 for the Blazers. They're going to hand off once again to... Uh, Galashaw, he's going to go for for about seven yards. Now, believe it or not, Dawson, um, I actually ended up writing the trivia questions for one of those trivia nights once upon a time uh, for their Star Wars trivia evening. So basically what you're telling me is that if I want to go to trivia night, I just need to talk to you in order to win. I will not help you. <laughs> <laughs> I love the bluntness. Now you're teasing a little bit. Just tell me you will not help. All right. That's good to know. And a quarterback keeper here for Morris. And he's going to gain enough for a first down. Make it a gain of about six. Yes, look, Dawson, I was dissatisfied with the number of people that got my questions correct in the first place. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, though. If there's a prize that I see at Trivia Night that I really, really want, maybe I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> <laughs> I will not help you. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's unfortunate. Hear that rejection first and foremost <laughs> here on Night Broadcasting, folks. But first and ten for the Blazers. And dropped past there. And the entire offensive line for Bellhaven had dropped to the ground. And that was interesting. I've seen that only happen a couple of times on different plays where... Perhaps they're trying to make it to where they can get a crossing route and they want to pass it through windows between helmets and such, but I've seen that very, very few times in my whole life of watching football where just every offensive lineman just drops to the ground. Yes, well, I mean, I'm familiar with the concept of the, the cut block, but not from right. all of the offensive linemen. <laughs> right. It's going to a little reverse here. Got a flag on the field, tripped up on that carry. <laughs> And I have just been made aware that Alex Langtree has made his way with the trainer back to the locker room. Mm. 
And did he had that, that hard hit on him earlier in this second half. So they'll be taking a further look at him there, uh, try to get him righted. An illegal formation on Bellhaven on that play. That flag was thrown as soon as the ball was snapped. So make it second down and 15. And uh, what do the volleyball players say? You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> And so we got, again, second down 15 here, four minutes and 13 seconds left in this third quarter. Got a two-back formation here. Two receivers on the far side, one on the near side. Morris back to pass. The check down to the running back. And ball's on the ground. And kicked by Bellhaven. And recovered by Southern Virginia, number 23. That is Mitchell Lasso. Let's go, man. <laughs> and... It, I do believe that it was offensive lineman number, I want to say it was 75. And indeed, he, it was 71 actually, I'm being told. It was Cole McAlphin who had just kicked the ball to keep it away from Southern Virginia, which as you know, you stated a couple plays ago, you can't do that. You just can't you do that. And so we're going to wait to see the result here. We do have flags on the field. They will indeed talk about that. Well, and for all of the excellent things that Bellhaven has done so far this game, um, their ball carrying, their hold on, on the ball has not been excellent. Right. You know, you and I were talking at halftime. You mentioned how they were holding it out, outside their body, you know, playing very loose with it. And indeed, it will be illegal kicking, but they declined the penalty as Southern Virginia recovered the ball that was Lasso who was able to get on the ball there. Um, but again, you mentioned the ball being loose, and when you're up by this many points, it's very easy to kind of you know play very loose and not really care about ball security, exactly what happened there. Yes, definitely playing a bit fast and loose with it. And if you're Southern Virginia at this point, of, of course you have to take advantage of that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised moving forward uh, to see a few more punch-out attempts occurring. We have Lachlan Hackey actually in the game for the first time in the second half. Pass to the outside, got a wide receiver screen. Gain of about eight yards there for wide receiver number six, Jake Schenk. And I believe that's the uh, largest uh, chunk of yardage that we've seen gained from one of those wide receiver screens so far today. I think you are correct indeed. That was a seven yard gain. And honestly what I'd like to see from Southern Virginia after the big turnover, which is one of the few positive plays you've had all game long, take a deep shot. You know, trying to capitalize like Bellhaven did in the first half. This is Johansson on the reception. Another wide receiver screen with a couple of good blocks down the field. There'll be a first down inside Blazer territory. And this would be the opportunity to take that deep shot. You've done a couple of passes real shallow. You're bringing the defense up. They have to exactly. protect against it. Now they know they have to look for those wide receiver blocks on the outside and you got trips on the far right or far side you got Johansson on the near side got a one-on-one -on -one situation you got to see what that safety is doing in the back that's the outside a tough throw throwing to the outside like that I mean you always look at the deep balls that are thrown it's like oh they have to throw that super far but you don't really think about how far you have to throw it for those sideline passes it's some, those are some of the longest throws you throw all game long as a quarterback and so throwing a little to the outside a little bit too far out of reach and completion there for Hackey. And just for reference for those at home watching, if you're standing in the center of the field and you're going to hit someone on the sideline, that's a 25-yard throw. Right. And then if you're on your near hash mark, that's an extra eight or so yards. That pass a little bit high, incomplete, ends up being a 30-plus yard throw. You know, and that's, again, that's not too shabby amount of yards to, to throw. But, again, now... Third down and 10 for Southern Virginia. But as we've seen with uh, with Hackey, you know, those quick wide receiver screens are his go-to. Yeah. He loves to go to those. And that's been the bread and butter of Southern Virginia's passing attack all year long. It's trip, trips left now, third down and 10, setting a man in motion. Fake the handoff to Collins. Hackey's going to check it down to McMullen. Megan defender miss. Gonna maybe gain maybe a yard at most. Yes, and for all that fancy footwork, not much gained on the play, but it certainly looked good. 
Indeed it did, making the defender miss at least once. So fourth down and 10 here. And in my opinion, you just go for it. You're down 54 to nothing, you go for it. You had a long field goal that was blocked in the first half. I mean, at that point, just try to see what you can do. Try to pull something out of your bag of tricks as an offense. Well, and they punted from this location previously. Right. And it sailed into the end zone, unfortunately. And we see they will go for it here. Hacky back to pass. Goes to the outside. Got two defenders on him. He's going to fight forward close to a first down, but I think he was just short. Indeed, that is the case. Even though it's completed to number 17, Scott Dupay. Well fought effort, but I do believe it will be a turnover on downs, and that is indeed what it will be. Just about an arm's reach away from that first down marker. And what a great defensive play there. I think that was uh, number uh, 21, Miles Hardy, on the tackle, laying that solid hit right before the line to gain, preventing that first down completion, or first down in general. And so we will see the Blazers take the field once again. Well, it seemed like perhaps after that turnover, the defense came in a bit unprepared. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until after several plays had already been run that they were able to recompose themselves and get to, get to play. This is Daniels on the carry. Gain of about seven. So it is Brock Morris and Devin Daniels in the backfield right now for the Blazers. Daniels with that run has 70 yards rushing on the day. He is third on the team behind Tim Johnson, the quarterback with 82 yards. And of course you have Colby Blunt with 152. Handoff once again. And he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe gains half a yard on that carry. So just in case y'all at home weren't wanting to do the math in terms of rushing totals, uh, Bell Haven is at a total of 329 yards thus far. Oof. And that, that'll make any offensive coordinator happy. I'll say that much. When you can run that, I mean, that's, that's a good quarterback statistic. I mean, you don't see running, a running game getting that many yardage, or that much yardage in a game at all. And that's a fullback carry there maybe getting to the line of scrimmage that time. And that is fullback number 44. That is Alex Burns. He had one pass target towards him earlier in the first half. The pass was behind him. Finally gets a target. Makes a fourth down and one. And if you're Bellhaven, you have your second string in, I say in the situation, why not give him some reps? Absolutely, and they're so close. We're here at the point where, and Bellhaven has proven that their rushing attack time and time again can get this yardage. And they had the QB sneak to convert a third down and short in the first half as well. That was, of course, with quarterback Tim Johnson in the backfield. But a timeout will be called to talk this over. And, but perhaps maybe you choose you want to get your punter some reps. Pardon me, it's not a timeout. It's actually the end of the third quarter. We'll go into the fourth quarter, we'll reverse side to the field, and then, again, much like with a timeout, they'll talk it over, figure it out, and it looks like they will be punting in a way. I mean, I, I, pre I can respect that, too, because you're up 54 nothing. You don't really need much more, and so just playing it like you would a regular game, just playing it away on fourth down. Give your defense a, a time to shine. Maybe get some more guys in the defensive line, linebackers, similar thing. Get some people some reps. And then we'll see Southern Virginia's offense return to the field. And here's the punt. McMullen on the return. Fortunately for him, it bounces out of bounds after he muffed the reception. Now, aside from the muffed punt return here, um, it would seem between the last offensive possession and the defensive stop that the Knights are beginning to gain a little bit of momentum here, a little bit of traction here, even though it does not reflect yet on the scoreboard. Right. Um, there's some positive things brewing here. And that's the thing is, you know, we mentioned earlier how in this half, again, you're down by a size, sizable amount. You just got to take every little thing. And you have a couple of good plays here and there. You have a couple of stops. You have 
you know, your offense able to make some things happen yardage-wise. Now one thing you definitely want to do would be to try to maybe capitalize on this drive, get us some points on the board in this fourth quarter. They're going to get to Jake Shank in the backfield, and he is brought down for a loss, and he is dragged even after he was on the ground. And that was defensive lineman number 95. That is Arnez Moore. I mean, Shank was brought down, and then he was on the ground, and the Moore continued to drag him around as he spun down to the ground himself. Dragged probably an additional five to seven yards. Yeah. <laughs> His jersey's going to have a lot of grass on one side, that's for sure, after that play. So now they make it second down and 17. That's the third time the Knights have tried a reverse play of a similar nature, each time not really resulting in a positive result. <laughs> And now the Knights are backed up inside their own five. Hackey back to pass, stepping up, and he's going to run for it. Trying to make a defender miss. He's going to get to around the 11-yard line, close to the original line of scrimmage. And unfortunately for him, that little cutback maneuver he pulled there um, brought him into the arms of another defender. Um, so whereas he had the one-on-one -on -one run there, um, in turning away from the defender on him, he found another. Indeed, that's how it's always that's how it's been all day long against Bellhaven, where there's not one defender there, there's another, and it's come from a blind side you can't see. It's so now third down and ten here on the eleven yard line. Trying for the hard count here. It worked against Bellhaven early in the first half. The option here. And Collins able to get some good yardage here on that pitch. Maybe about four yards, make it fourth down and a long six. And while Collins perhaps the atypical uh, running option, perhaps the most productive here on the Knights field today. Yeah, I mean, he's had the most highlight plays. He had the hurdle early in the third quarter that got the crowd excited. And, and of course, this is a day where Southern Virginia's running attack just really hasn't been able to get much going at all whatsoever. It's just been really tough for them. You know, you have Williams with 18 yards, and then Collins before that play had eight yards, and Dwyer with one. Here's the punt here. Again, keeping it low. It'll be a fair catch at the 47-yard line. Fielding at that time was number one. That is Cooper Tulo. Well, and what's so interesting as well about this punting style is that not only is the punt kept low, um, punter takes the time and holds on to the ball a lot longer than right. most punters that you will see in this conference or anywhere in college football. Right, and a big reason for that is to allow your teammates to get down the field for coverage purposes. I mean, you know, you go up to Division One, like, say, with a school like Alabama, you're the fastest players in the country. So the punter, he can just catch it, punt it away, no problem. They can get down the field. They can also kick it a lot higher, like a mile high in the sky, essentially. And in this situation, we're in D3. That's not necessarily as much of an option here. So you kind of have to be more strategic about it, much like you just mentioned, Nick. And we have a Southern Virginia Knight down on the field. Indeed, that is number 96, Sawyer Rasmussen, freshman from West Jordan, Utah. Unsure as to what occurred to have him down on the play here. But the trainers will come out to see him. It'll make it second down and one for Bellhaven. So just over 12 minutes remaining in this contest. And we've seen a lot of players go down today, especially offensive and defensive linemen for both squads. And especially this late in the season, you know, conference tournament play is coming up. You know, Southern Virginia having the one conference win on the year. You know, that's more so Bellhaven that's looking more forward towards that and trying to maintain their health. And so hopefully we'll see Rasmussen be able to get up here in a moment. And the, this upcoming tournament play, of course, is part of the reason why you're seeing Bellhaven have so many different substitutions come in, so many different running backs come in right. uh, to preserve the health of their players. Absolutely. And speaking of coming towards the end of the year, uh, I failed to mention this is the final home contest for Southern Virginia this year. They will close off their season next week. And 
because of that, they honored several seniors, all the seniors involved with dance team as well as for the football squad. And they did that before the game had started. You had McKenna Albert, Misa Eller, and Michaela LaSauce and Madison Minor on the dance squad. And then for Southern Virginia's football squad, they had Michael Brown, Stockton Ferguson, Elvis Nwaneri, Michael Johansson, Jake Shank, Dylan Seawright, and Colby Heider. Run to the outside here for Bellhaven. Will be a first down and a bit more. Now, perhaps, Dawson, if you get the opportunity, because I don't have access to that senior information um, as we go on and come to the close of this game, if you would let us know um, what degrees these seniors are right. getting. Indeed, we'll get all of that information. Make sure to honor those seniors as we get later on and after the game is concluded. So it's first down and 10 for the Blazers. Here is Morris, runs, handing it off to the right side. And on that carry was number two, Deontay Galishaw. Gain of about seven. Approaching 11 minutes remaining in this contest. And I believe that'll put Galishaw um, just above 30 yards rushing so far on this game, although he's been their primary returner thus far. And has done a great job doing it. Two backs in the backfield. Morris back to pass. He's going to let it fly towards the end zone. Nearly complete for a touchdown. A little too high for his intended receiver. That was once again Galishaw. We haven't really been able to see Morris let it loose so far today as, again, we mentioned Tim Johnson having the majority of the reps as the starter earlier in this game. Yes, and Mo Morris there had every opportunity to, to find his receiver who really had no coverage surrounding right. him. Uh, just sailed that one a bit too high. You also have the sun coming in from the left side of the field here, and that probably was also a factor in that dropped pass. But then again, it was really high up there. He really had to meet it at the peak. And shut down at the line of scrimmage is Galishaw. Yes, and they'll go from that split back once again. Um, this time, Galishaw not nearly uh, quite so fortunate as he was on his last run. And that was Hyder on the tackle that time, making it fourth down and three for the Blazers. And I, again, I agree with this in a situation where you have your, your backups going in there, get a couple more reps, try to get them in a situation where you have to convert a fourth down. And they're going to hand it off up the middle that time to number 25 as Caleb Galishaw. Now, I believe uh, that Bellhaven has pulled Blunt um, from the game from the time that we saw their celebration on the side of the field, um, which we believe to be celebrating in that 1,000-yard mark. Indeed. Just giving a little bit of rest. I mean, once you reach 1,000 yards rushing on the season, you can kind of say he, he deserves the break for the rest of the game, to say the least. That being said, as we were talking about that 1,000-yard mark and a bit of dispute as to whether or not we're talking about uh, just positive yardage gains or net yards. Under center now is Morris. They're going to hand it off to Galishaw. And he is met just past the line of scrimmage. Galishaw with the number 10. Second down for the Blazers. And to be clear for the, uh, the fans at home here, uh, there are two separate running backs that go by the name of Galishaw. Indeed. You have, of course, number two, who is Deontay Galishaw, number 25, Caleb Galishaw. So, again, for those who are confused, that, that there's a reason why. <laughs> there certainly is. It's now second down and eight here in the red zone. We've talked about the success rate of Bellhaven in the red zone all season long. It's basically an automatic. They get in there, they score points. 
Here's Galishaw once again. He cuts inside, breaking tackles into the end zone. Ends up having two defenders bounce off of him as he walks in. And he refused to be brought down. No, he saw open green, and he wasn't going to get stopped. So it'll be another touchdown for the Blazers. Make it 60 to nothing with the point after pending. And again, just a solid handoff up the middle. Had a couple of defenders ricochet off him. Another great running lane created by the offensive line for the Blazers, which again, we can talk about the rushing yards and the running backs behind them all we want. But you just know that the coaches over there, they see the offensive line for Belhaven as the MVPs of today's game. Because really, like for them, that offensive line, they see that yardage, they're like, hey, that's us. We created that. Well, and clearly the truth of the matter is here is it hasn't mattered which running back they've put in. Right. That running back has been able to produce because of those big boys up front. Right, exactly. They've been able to create those opening uh, spaces. But we also, again, we mentioned the uh, first contact that hasn't brought these running backs down. So, again, working in tandem here to where the offensive line creates the running lanes. Like, even if the Knights were able to get a tackle in first contact, you'd still see Belhaven with around 200 yards rushing just because of the open lanes that the offensive line has created. And if this was the NFL and the players were getting paid like that, this is the part of the game where we'd be saying that these running backs ought to be taking the offensive line out to dinner. <laughs> hey, there you go. Even, even if that's not the case, you know, I'd say why not when you get back home, you know what, guys, dinner's on me. It's going to be expensive dinner feeding those offensive linemen. But you know what? They're going to be happy, and they're going to pay more running lanes for you. The Knights will be receiving this kickoff here. Some new returners back here. He's got some open space. Finally brought down around the 43-yard line. That was Domo Dwyer on the return. And interestingly, Dawson, the Bellhaven defense has been near impenetrable. Um, however, in, in terms of return, the Knight squad has done quite well. Uh, been able to get out to that 35, 30-yard line on yeah. most every return. Yeah, I mean, every single return they've been able to get some positive yards, be able to put themselves into a solid starting position as far as field yeah. position is concerned. The only time where it, they were not able to get a good return was unfortunately that play where Alex Langtree took quite a hit on his return early in the third quarter. Hackey yeah. throws the left side. as a shank, lowering his shoulder, falling ahead for an extra yard after that contact, and he even had defender number 18 for Bellhaven. Cornelius Clay tapping him on the helmet saying, hey, good job. Well, at some point, you have to respect what, what's given. Game is game, as they say. Hey, absolutely. And Shank has proven time and time again that he has indeed gotten that. Or rather, game respects game is what they say. Absolutely. Hackey is going to step up. Brought down after a gain of about one. In on that tackle was number 90, Cooper Martin. So third down and five. Just under seven and a half remaining in this one. Now, just for a little bit more context, as Dawson was speaking on how well Bellhaven has done in the red zone all season long, yeah. all game long. Uh, coming into today's game, they had only been denied thrice in the, end of the red zone which, I mean, all season long, that's, I mean, seven games, only being denied three times in the red zone. It doesn't get much better than that. I mean, obviously, like 100%, but it doesn't get much better than that, realistically. And I believe they only needed to have one of those opportunities become a field goal. Right. So all of the rest of those red zone opportunities were converted into touchdowns. And again, that puts a smile on any coach's face any day of the week. They're looking at that stat, and, you know, coaches will say we don't pay attention to stats, but secretly there are some they look at and they just smile a little bit. And red zone efficiency is one of them. Aki throws to the outside to Shank. Another wide receiver screen. I, I personally I feel like 60 to 70% of Southern Virginia's play calls today have been those outside wide receiver screens. Well, you know what? It, it works. It gets a couple of yeah. yards. Not to mention that this Bellhaven uh, defense, their backs consistently have 
a number of deflections per game. Right. Obviously, we talked about um, the standard of having an average of an interception per game. Um, so passing deep against this squad is no easy thing to do. It definitely is not. There is a reason why the Stevens has been so fantastic. And a pass complete here to Dwyer. He's got open space. 10, 15, 5, and to the end zone. Touchdown, Knights. And a flag is thrown. I believe Dwyer had some words after the play. Maybe a little bit unsportsmanlike conduct. And that's not going to... That's not gonna make the coach happy. And again, pass across the middle of the field. Fantastic throw there from Hackey. And then Dwyer did the rest. Yes, and we saw a bit of a celebration from him there in the end zone. So perhaps uh, this is the reason for the flag. I might push them back on the PAT. We're still waiting the call. The fans ready for a comeback. Indeed, it will be on sportsmanlike conduct on Domo Dwyer. And it's it's one thing to celebrate, um, but it's another thing entirely when it's directed towards another player. And that point after is up, and it is good. Make it 61 to seven. And you know, I'm sure the coach is sitting there thinking, "Hey, look, the score is not in our favor. We got one touchdown. We don't need that." You know, I'm sure that's a conversation that is being had. But at the same time. When you do succeed, it's hard not to be excited. So it's kind of catch-22 there. Another flag thrown on the field. And frankly, at this point in the game, with the, the score being what it is, it's important to still be having fun. Yeah, at the end of the day, it is a game. We're still awaiting the call here on the field. It was thrown on the far side. Got almost all the refs coming and talking to Coach Dupay of Southern Virginia about the call. Here's the call. So it's offsides on the defense, and that was number four, Christian Lewis. And they declined the penalty on that play. So Southern Virginia will kick off. And that's the thing, too, is like in a game like this, we talked about getting those little small victories here, right? And I think putting points on the board is, a, is one of the big ones you can have. Just make sure you don't come out of here, you know, being shut out. That's the big thing. And a day where you're not shut out is a good day. That's in, I've been on the receiving end of many shutouts, and it's never a good feeling, let me tell you what. So I know they're glad they're able to get some offensive production. And again, at the end of the day, it just shows them, hey, we're, we're capable of, you know, moving the ball down the field, getting those deep shots. I mean, Domo Dwyer really able to make some moves in the middle of open field. So six minutes remaining in this one. Score stands 61 to seven. And the Knights will kick off from their own 20 because of the penalty. It was because of the unsportsmanlike conduct from Domo Dwyer. We got some overturned space here. A filthy move out of it. My goodness, making defenders miss left and right. That is number 29, Irwin Reed. Returns to the midfield, and like you said, some filthy footwork there. I mean, yeah, two knights that basically ran into each other and took each other out of the play. Well, and basically able to stop on a dime, change direction. Knights continue on, and so he's able to take advantage and continue on up the field. Indeed, so less than six minutes remaining, we will see quarterback number 14, Brock Morris, return to the field, as well as running back number zero, Devin Daniels. Daniels has 71 yards rushing on the day, third on the team. And they're gonna hand it off to Daniels. And he's gonna get some more yardage, breaking some tackles. He's gonna fall forward for a first down. And I believe with that, he will move up to second on the team in rushing, just ahead of starting quarterback number eight, Tim Johnson. Now, to be clear, Daniels had a productive rushing season. Oh, yeah. Um, many, many a productive rushing game for him. Um, after today's totals, uh, Daniels will have passed the 500-yard rushing mark. So you have an 1,000-yard rusher. Again, we're disputing the yardage there depending on what you're looking at and then a 500 yard rusher 
I mean, when you have two running backs able to produce that many yards, as well as a mobile quarterback like Tim Johnson, their starting quarterback, is, that's just a dangerous attack if I've ever seen one. The handoff to Daniels there. Moving the pile, gain of about six. Well, and the truth of the matter is, is with rushers that can put up those kinds of totals, um, no matter who they're putting in, you have to expect the run. Right, exactly. And that's the thing is that when you play against a team that is multifaceted, that is not one-dimensional, that makes your job as, def as a defensive coordinator that much harder, right? Because it makes it to where you have to do that much more study and you basically just a lot of times guessing every time. And my goodness, when you've got a quarterback who can move like Johnson can, yeah. it's even when they drop back for the pass, you yeah. still have to expect the run. Then you have to have one guy assigned to spy on him in the pocket. Mega defenders move that time. That is Galishaw, Caleb Galishaw. It's a first down run. Now four minutes remaining in this one. And so, yes, defensively, when you have to assign a spy, you know, you're down an extra defensive back in the rest of the field. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, you have the big playmakers down the field for Bellhaven that they've really been able to utilize quite a bit. You know, Fabian Carter, he had 45 yards in the day, and then Blanchard with 20. So not, not massive numbers through the air, just enough that they needed because the running game has just been that effective today. Well, and that's been their story all year long. Once under center, Galashaw met right away by defender. That's number 59. That is Isaiah Thomas. No, we're not talking about the shooting guard from the Boston Celtics a couple years ago. Nor the Isaiah Thomas from the good old days of the Detroit Pistons. I mean, talk about a namesake. <laughs> Certainly. No, we're talking about the Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, who currently stands here in beautiful Buena Vista. From Cleveland, Ohio, freshman. Now second down and 12. Hand off to Galashaw. And he's got some space. He's inside the red zone now. Now, I have to tell you, Dawson, if I was any team in this USA South Conference, following this season, I'd be calling up the coach at Maryville, uh, who Bellhaven played this last week, and asking them what they did, what, what you know, what happened, and for them to be able to stop the run. Rex, right, you were showing me the stat line for all the games this season for Bellhaven. You know, team as a team like 250 rushing yards, 250 rushing yards, 300 rushing yards, a couple and then of four hundreds in there. Yeah, and then Maryville. I think it was 42 rushing yards, able to really shut it down. You're absolutely right. They're like, hey, what, what kind of special sauce did you feed your defensive lineman that week? What, what sort of barbecue did you give him? Or what game plan did you have? You know, like, again, there's a lot of questions you got to ask that guy, and I'm sure he's sitting to himself like, I, I, I know how to do this. I know how to shut this down. Go watch the footage. Go <laughs> watch the tape. That's <laughs> probably what he's saying. And speaking of Maryville, that is who Southern Virginia will be playing this next week for their season finale. As now second down and six in the red zone, just under two minutes remaining, and Bellhaven more than content to just let the clock wind down to the conclusion of this ball game. So I'm sure a coach from Maryville not wanting to give any, away any of his secrets to the Knights. Oh, I'm sure. And our handoff to the fullback up the middle, close to getting inside the five yard line. And as a carry from Braden Sparks. A flag thrown, an offensive lineman ended up flying into the end zone. And his helmet came off. Although everyone appears to be healthy and moving around just fine on the play. So fortunate for that with the helmet off. Still waiting for the official call here on the field. Rest still talking it over. And there's a flag down on the, the one yard line and I believe that's the only flag there. Maybe perhaps a, an, a little extra shove or maybe someone had yanked on his face mask and pulled his helmet off. I believe that may have been the case. 
it would appear that they're prepared to come forward with the call now. I believe they're saying that's on number 16, Colby Hyder. Either that or 15, Case and Spackman. I believe that's what they're going to say that it was on Spackman. And so makes it first down and goal at the three. And I think Bellhaven is just going to possibly kneel it here or QB sneak. They are indeed going to kneel it. And that is very respectable. Again, at the end of the game, you're up 61-7. to seven. It's close to the end of the game. You've already had a couple injuries. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about kneeling it at the three, however. <laughs> you know, kneeling it at most any location and throughout the field, obviously, is respectable close out the game. Mm -hmm. You're at the three, might as well just run it in, um, give them another opportunity on offense. That being said, um, if you're looking towards the, the close of this season and potential tournament play, um, you're trying to keep your players healthy. You don't want to have any opportunity for right. injury. And the extra points are, just aren't necessary in this situation. You know, you've you got this game well in hand as the game is coming to a close. The game and play clock are basically only one second apart. So I'm not sure if they'll need to kneel it down one more time. Or if they're going to make them do it with one second left. I think they're just going to kneel it one more time just to be sure. And indeed, that is exactly what they will do. And so the final score here at Knight Stadium is 61-7 to in favor of the Blazers of Bellhaven. And as this game started, we talked about how Bellhaven was coming in here with a chip on their shoulder, having lost their first loss of the year against Maryville. You knew they were going to come out swinging. You knew they were going to come out guns and blazing. Whatever phrase you want to use to illustrate that concept, that's exactly what they ended up doing here today with Southern Virginia. Yes, and they certainly wanted to show, hey, our running game, it still works and better than ever. Exactly. You know, again, we talked about them in Maryville having around 40, 42 yards rushing, and they're like, hey, those are bread and butter. It's not broken. We just had a bad week, or Maryville had just had a really good game plan. So let's now take one more moment to appreciate our seniors. Right, absolutely. We mentioned that both the seniors for the dance squad as well as Knights football team were honored before today's game. You had McKenna Albert, who will be graduating with a degree in biology with a nursing specialization. And following her graduation, McKenna will be attending the University of Southern Mississippi for their accelerated RN program, then will seek a CRNA certification. Then for Misa Eller, she'll be graduating with a degree in biochemistry with minors in athletic training and psychology. Following her graduation, Misa will be attending uh, PA school. Then Michaela Lasas, we mentioned before the game, I love the last name Lasas, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Michaela will be graduating with a degree in history and psychology. And following her graduation, she'll be attending the University of Florida for their criminology program. You had Madison Minor, and Madison will be graduating with a degree in history along with a psychology minor and a religious studies concentration. Following her graduation, Madison plans to attend graduate school and pursue a master's degree in library information science with a focus in archival studies. And then moving on to football with Michael Brown. Michael will be graduating with a degree in business management and leadership and will begin pursuing his career. And then you have Stockton Ferguson. Stockton will be graduating with a degree in business management and leadership. And following his graduation, Stockton will pursue a career in either medical device, software sales, or sports marketing. Then Elvis Guaneri. Elvis will be graduating with a degree in graphic design. And following his graduation, he'll pursue a career in design. Matthew Johansson, we've mentioned his name several times here today on those wider super screens. Matthew will be graduating with a degree in psychology. And following his graduation, he will pursue a master's degree in psychology. Then Jake Shank. Jake will be graduating with a degree in business management and leadership, and following his graduation, Jake will move to Utah, where he recently received his emergency medical technician certification, will becoming a firefighter. And Dylan Seawright. Dylan will be graduating with a degree in business management and leadership, and following his graduation, Dylan will be getting married in January and will go to school to become a firefighter. And then you have Colby Heider. We mentioned his name a couple times today, too. He's a great defensive leader. Colby will be graduating with a degree in family and human development, and following his graduation, he will attend graduate school to pursue a master's in social work. So those are all the seniors we honor here today. Virginia, both on the dance team, as well as on the football squad. And once again, Nick, great to have you here for the second half. I want to give a shout out to Quinn, who was here for the first half of this on Knights Broadcasting. Always great to commentate with you. 
Yes, thank you very much, Dawson. And thank you to our seniors who have worked so hard uh, this year on the field and in the classroom. And thank you once more to the friends, family, and fans at home. Absolutely. I want to give a shout out to those who make this production possible. This being the last football broadcast of the year on night broadcasting. We thank those who tuned in week in and week out. For those behind the scenes, cameramen, producers, and all the like. And once again, I'm Dawson Wiedrich alongside Nicholas O'Connor saying have a great Saturday and go Knights.